Alright guys, let's hold up there. Um, the video chat's role play is fine. As you're listening as, uh, as a customer, again, that kind of allows for the objectives to sink into your head a bit. Uh, use your manuals on your demos for sure. Everybody get that? All right. That way uh, you include the information the customer needs. Also, that way you're not so focused on memorizing everything. Um, there's some extra blue binders floating around because so some of you may have had like some sticky stuff on the front cover. If your binder's a little like gooey or something, grab one that. These are the ones you're going to use. So if need be, feel free. I know there's another one over here, Mike, uh, yeah. on the ground there. So make sure you have yours that you're going to use and each person has a blue binder. There may be like an extra one or two floating around. If need be, I can get more to you guys, okay? Um, but these are the ones you're going to use. And those are blue binders. Let's begin with some recognition, and then I'm going to do a quick review of the objectives of the demo, and then we'll dive into the first conversation today, which is about price conviction mainly, uh, and you believing in the price of Cutco. So MVP pin will go to the person who has the most names. <clears throat> so you guys know we like to recognize you for a job well done, because performance recognized is performance repeated. And please remember that when you're managing other people and managing yourself. Um, and then at our different meetings, from here on in, we're going to do a recognition based on sales. And we do what's called a uh, countdown, although it probably would be more like a count up. So, uh, for example, everybody above 400 stand up. You have more than 400 names stand up. Okay, so everybody above 400, 400 or more. Okay, got it. Uh, normally we would say, hey, everybody above like $2,000 go on stage. So we have a division meeting coming up. Uh, and then anybody who sells a certain amount gets to go on stage and give their sales report on a microphone to the audience and we clap and acknowledge them. Right? Remember, if you ever, when you're applauding somebody, you want to applaud them as if you're being applauded for because you guys created an environment where there was some fun competition that went on. So make sure you properly acknowledge somebody. It's also being generous to them too. You know, it's letting somebody know you care, it's a job well done. And you uh, are uh, just acknowledging them for kicking butt. All right? So you guys are number one, number two. Let's see who's the number one overall. So I'll gradually count up, but again, I'll do this from, for sales from now on, right? So 400 to 600. Now, if you're both higher, everybody say higher. So everybody say higher, because they're higher, so you say higher. Everybody get that? All right, 600 to 800. Okay, so everybody says higher. higher. Okay, cool. Yeah, and this makes it fun as well. You know? I've done this for 13 years. Right? One thing I like about the business, it's fun. It's like a sports you know, team. It's, uh, it's like a pep rally almost, you know? Uh, so what did I just leave off that? 800. Okay, cool. 800 to 1,000? Okay, everybody right. say. All right, give them a round of applause for over 1,000 names. That's cool. Well done, guys. Five times this right. uh, 1,000 to 1,200? Okay, so we get to give your report. Are your, if you're in that range, so you get to give your report. So you say, my name is? So my name is Steven Alfano. And then you, I wrote down? 1,056. Cool, and then you say, I'm, I'm part of the Westchester Power. And we, and we clap for it. All right. Okay, and then there's number one. All right, cool. So uh, 1,200 to 1,400. So everybody, everybody say higher. Yeah, you say higher. Okay, good. All right, so 1,400 to 1,600. 1,583. Cool. So, cool. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Oh, yeah, they acknowledge that. All right, pass back the MVP pin. Not to travel MVP pin, okay? So uh, you'll uh, whoever does the best on tonight's assignment will then have the pin tomorrow, all right? So if you maintain it, you maintain it. You know, then you can just keep it straight through. Uh, let's make sure you get the comfy chair. Right. Yes. Not the Oh, this is so exciting. All right. So what I would do, you probably want to just shift yourself over here, Mel. Okay, so you get that comfy chair throughout the day. All right, guys, in your notes, write down uh, price conviction. Actually, yeah, write down price conviction. Okay. Make sure your cell phone ringers are turned off, obviously. To get, uh, make sure you're present. Remember, take responsibility. Leads to power. If you want, take responsibility for being focused. If you find your mind wandering, get yourself present again, right? All right, so if your mind's wandering, obviously you're not listening to uh, the, uh, the the current conversation that we're having. And the training is just a series of conversations. So this particular one that we're talking about is price conviction. I put down product conviction as well so we can distinguish between the two. And we'll come back to that, so I have that ready to go. Just as a quick reminder, you know, I probably wouldn't be that effective as a sales manager if I didn't constantly review the objectives. So you guys remember the top of page one, you know, the very first thing is why should I be uh, 
What's the first question you have to answer? A customer has to be candidate exact. The member somebody has to be at least open minded. Is recall that, okay? So whatever yeah, I probably should just flip through the blue binders and do this. How far are you blue binders, dude? Thanks. Appreciate it. Okay, so the first thing you have to answer is why should I be a candidate to buy Cucka when? Today versus later now, exactly. Because if they say they're going to buy later, they're not lying to you, but member folding memory. Good. I love that you guys are learning these concepts because you can really, you're just, you're just understanding how the mind works, right? which is great, and how, how you can perform at a higher level and things. <clears throat> All the contests that you go through, you want to transfer some excitement because these are things you can win. Now, they're not going to buy just to, so you can win the contest, but this could serve as a reason why they buy now versus later. People only buy Cuckoo because Cuckoo's good guys. All right? Hands down. But you want to create an urgency. Sometimes we need a reason. You ever been about to buy something on the internet, but you want to give yourself a reason? And you're like, oh, full moon, let me buy. You know, it's like you just come up with something, right? Or you call your friend, and your friend's like, yeah, do it. I'm like, okay. All right, so you know you're going to buy it, but you just, you just have to have a reason, right? So in case somebody asks you, you're like, yeah, here's why. Okay, because ultimately that way we don't like feel weird about making a bad decision. You know, we love to look good, right? And have our decisions be like looking good and stuff like that. So just consider sometimes a customer just needs that extra reason. You know, they love the product, but they just need that extra reason, right? So all the different contests you're in. Sponsorship's really important for word of, yeah, referral generation, okay? And then how does somebody sponsor you? One full sheet, exactly. It gives you something to, you know, and that's in your white binders, which you'll get, okay? That's where they write down the names and numbers. Uh, you're in your fast start. Cool, yeah, get excited about these prizes. This is designed to be a character you guys chase after. You know, we want you excited to earn and win and, and feel good about prizes and everything, guys. You know, we want you to be driven to an objective, not coasting through life. All right, so more contests, the merrier. You can win some cool stuff, guys. Uh, this is where you go through the different sets. You cook as you like to, have to, or, you know, yeah, or not at all. All right, it's like, you know, we have the perfect set for you. Um, by the way, what's neat is you're recalling this information. You don't need to memorize it. It's in your manuals. But the fact that you've role-played several times, you remember some of the stuff. The shopping spree is how much? Yeah, and you'll, Steve asked me, so you guys will get a little raffle of coupons. That's what the customer fills out. All right, and then we pick a winner. You just put them in the box back there. There's a little box over there, right? Uh, what are the two charities we donate to? Okay, awesome, good. And then we get through company history. What year do we first sell Cucko? 49, awesome. Do you guys remember how many customers we have? This is 15 million, but it's up to 16 million now. The binder's a bit outdated. Even if you just said 15 million, it's fine. You guys get the point. The point is that everybody's doing it. They're, they're not the first guinea pig, you know, to try out the product line. Uh, factories are upstate New York, right? This is where you cut what type of coin? Woo, yeah, make sure they're 1984, or 86 or newer. Yeah, is that what it, yeah. Uh, then go to the disadvantages. The purpose of this section is to answer the question, why should I... Uh, well, no, why should I replace what I'm currently using? Yeah, for sure. Okay, because you'll go through the technology at Cutco next. Don't get intimidated if they have things like Glistoff and whatnot. We're going to go through that today. They're good, but we're great in comparison. Inevitably, this has to be replaced. It'll be a good 10 years, but if something has to be replaced, that's a problem. All right, if something breaks down and stops working. You know, so these are the issues. Cover these things with them. Two types of handles you talked about are what? Perfect. All right, two types of steel. Good. Two types of edges. Straight. Okay. Awesome. Okay. And then the rivets usually made of brass. brass exactly. Okay. Wood is nasty because it absorbs stuff. Right. Okay. Cool. Well, not cool, but cool. You can understand that. All right. So uh, then we get through. How many features make us the best? Five. Okay. Great. You know the handle. What museum was that in? <coughs> oh, bless you. Museum of Modern Art. Great. Uh, the steel we use. The best way to remember. Just merge together these two. So if you remember carbon and stainless. You could say high carbon, surgical, stainless steel. Okay, so it's carbon and stainless put together, guys. All right, you remember from the video, we heat temper in a way that makes it super strong. Um, our edge is called the double durable edge, exactly. Double D, double durable edge. Because it has, and how many miniature straight edges are between every two points? Three. 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 Okay, you can almost get a visual of it now. You've seen it enough times. One, two, and three. All right, and that point protect those edges from hitting against the plate. What, stronger? How many rivets do we have? Three. three. All right, it's made of nickel. Silver alloy, cool. All right, good. Uh, Thomas Lamb, picture of his, uh, you know, illustrations. Uh, the Edge, blown up picture there. You guys got that. All right, Forbes Magazine wrote about us. It's credible. Great. Uh, this is my receipt from sending back a bunch of product line, uh, so they can see. Wow, this is a cool guarantee. Real example of the guarantee in usage or in use, right? Uh, guarantee itself, better than lifetime. You guys know that because it's what? 
forever. Okay, awesome. Okay, pass it down from every you know, generation, one to the next. All right. uh, the money back guarantee, the question you're really answering there, oh, before that, though, remember the, the features of Cutco answer the question, why does Cutco cost what it does, which is what we're about to go into with price conviction, making sure you guys clearly understand yourself. Right. Uh, purpose of this page is why should I buy now versus later. Okay. Uh, remember the old deposit program, you know, we'll overview that a bit later too. For me to get a set sent to my house, I'm only going to put down one fifth now if I want to do the monthly payments. And then if I like it, I'll keep paying the payments. It's just an auto pay. And if I don't like it, you'd pick it up from them, which means they have no risk of being stuck with it. They don't have to be like super motivated to send it back in. I want them comfortable at least trying it out. I used to joke with the house. I'm like, that way divorce won't result over knives. <laughs> right? So, you know, because somebody who's there without their significant other, they're worried about their significant other getting upset. So this is how it, that's an impossibility because it's not permanent. It could be reversed. Uh, you should be getting a lot of return orders, but we want to make sure they clearly know how to or that they have the ability to. Bottom of this page, before you show them these, you want them looking at this as one set, set versus a bunch of pieces. Yeah. So don't use the P word, just pieces. Yes. If they return their order, does that have anything to do with your commission or of, paycheck? Yeah, of course. You wouldn't get paid on that. Yeah, if it's reversed. Yeah, for sure. So my first summer, I had one order adjust, well, one return spatula spreader, and then I had a homemaker reduced down by like three knives. All the rest was routine. Yeah, because otherwise, what would stop a rep from putting in like a five thousand dollar order, you know, getting paid on it, and then it's reversed. Yeah, that would be a problem for us as a corporation. Um, okay, so then you go through the um, good question. I mean, so if you do get like a like a, a returned order, which it happens once in a blue moon, pretend as if it was a no sell to begin with. You know what I mean? All right, because that way you don't get all discouraged and stuff. It, it is what it is. It happens. You know what I mean? Every now and then. It shouldn't be happening often for, well, why? They have what? Before they buy, they have an opportunity to what? Yeah, that's the whole point of you sitting down with them for an hour, guys. All right? That's the whole idea of answering their questions when? Before they come up or during the now, during the demonstration. But really, it's before they come up, ultimately, is what you're looking to do with a consumer. So we go through the different tools, have them cut real food. You have four start items. Parry knife, trimmer, tea carver, and a table knife, right? Win as much as possible in your fast start, so it adds to, you get a bigger sample kit to, uh, to demonstrate to people. Uh, they get wood blocks or plastic trays, if you recall. Okay, and the picture's here in the drawer, two trays side by side. Okay, so they have that option as well, right? And then in a bit later on, we're going to go through the different size sets when we talk about the pricing and dropping down and all that. So you start with our biggest set first, and we drop down from there. So you find a set that meets their needs but fits in their budget. So we'll review that company. So that's another visual of the demonstration. Okay, overall, that's why we do what we do. But anyway, back to the whole price conviction concept. Cocto's not cheap, I'll tell you that right now, but you need to appreciate the price. You, you, remember, it is what it is, and then all that there is is your opinion of stuff. The price is the price. Your opinion of it will affect your confidence as you speak to a customer. So you need to have an opinion of the price, like that makes sense, that's affordable, uh, but yet it's not cheap to begin with. All right? We make it in this country, we pay union labor, we use amazing materials, obviously thermal resin costs us a lot more money, you guys get that? Okay, we have it forever guaranteed, so of course we're going to charge more. We pay you handsomely, we pay factory workers well, like I said. So you, you know, the price is the price, there's no way you can have it be dirt cheap, it just doesn't make sense, it wouldn't work. All right, but you want to make sure customers... Um, but appreciation for the price. Right. So now that visual, yes, so remember expected price versus actual. So I'll just put it on the board again for you. So throughout the demo, you're going to add blocks of value, blocks of value, blocks of value. So that way at the end, the customer in their mind has an expected price that's high up. And then when they hear the actual price, this would be actual price right here, you just got to make sure that the expected price is uh, higher than the actual price. All right, so if their expected price is less than the actual price, they'll be turned off to the price when they hear it. All right, so for example, like, and we have, in our minds, we have expected prices about things. Like if I said real quick, what does an average pair of Nikes cost? You'd say what? About 100, 120 bucks. You'd get that, like, so in our mind, we have, the, just as consumers, expected price of Nike is about $100. All right, so if I said, hey, give me 30 bucks for a brand new pair, you'd be like, cool, right? If I said, hey, give me 500, you'd be like, get the heck out of here, right? Because the price would end up being higher than what you expect it to be. Okay, so you want to make sure that they, when they hear price, it's lower than what they expect, which means it's like, yeah, good deal. Here's another concept to get in your notes. You should be writing this stuff down. 
Okay, so you have a uh, relationship of quality to price. Three different scenarios. Okay, so Nike is being priced at 100 bucks. That's where P is equal to Q. The price is equal to the quality is what the market calls for, I like to say. Uh, as consumers, we'd rather the quality be above the price. That's getting a phenomenal deal. That's the definition of value, really. When something quality of something outweighs the price, it's a great deal. If the price is higher than the quality, that's a ripoff. That's the $5 example for a pair of Nikes. Right, so your job is to present Cutco and make sure they see that the quality is above the price. So, you know, if I said, hey, would you pay 20 bucks for a product? Raise your hand real quick if you pay 20 bucks for a product line. Well, don't you got to know what it is first? Uh-huh. <laughs> right, so, imagine I said, give me 20 bucks for this. You'd be like, heck no. I purposely did it fast so you guys would raise your hand, obviously. But do you get that you need to know what the item is in order to be able to say yes or no to paying money on something? Okay, so, but if I said, hey, give me 20 bucks for an iPhone, you'd say yes. If I said, give me 20 bucks for this crappy pen, you'd say, heck no. So the price was the same. What did we change in those examples? Quality. Got it? All right, so if I said, hey, you know, give me 10 grand for your dream car, you would find a way to come up with the 10 grand. 10 grand. Yeah, now if I said, give me 10 grand for my shoes, you'd be like, no way. So now 10 grand is not like pocket change. I doubt, doubt you have it in your pocket right now, but because the deal with the whole Ferrari or Bentley or whatever you love, what kind of car, you, it's such a great deal, you'd find a way to come up with the money. Like literally, if I said you have to find it by tomorrow morning, you'd figure it out, all right? Or if I said you could buy, I'd give you whatever mansion you want anywhere in the world on any beach or whatever, I'll give it to you for 10 grand, but you have to have the 10 grand by tomorrow, I'm sure you'd figure it out. So the quantity of the money is not necessarily the focus, it's the quality we're getting in return for that quantity of money. All right, so you're starting to understand the definition of value now as a consumer and also a salesperson. So I address the need for quality. Now, from here on in, whenever I say the word need, I don't really mean need. We say we need our cell phone. Do we really need it like food, water, and shelter? No. True necessity keeps you alive, right? Air, food, water, shelter, stuff like that, right? We often use the word need when it comes to desires and conveniences. If we get so used to technology, we are like, ooh, I need that. So that's what I mean when I say need. What's interesting about cutlery is whether they buy cutlery or not, everybody's going to have knives. So it's cool that we have a product that everybody uses. Isn't that neat? Can't say that about everything, right? Like if you were selling, um, I don't know, think about some sort of technology that a lot of households just don't have, it wouldn't be as easy to sell it then. Okay, so knives, everybody has knives. Even if, you know, they don't cook a lot, everybody's going to have some kind of a knife. I doubt you'd, you'd be hard pressed to find a household in the country that doesn't have at least one knife. Okay? And it may be a freakish example, who the heck knows, but you get my point, right? So you want to start to look at having good knives though is really like a necessity. Uh, because it keeps us safe. Guys, what's the sole purpose of a knife to do what? Cut large food into bite-sized pieces we don't choke. If God gave us bigger mouths, we wouldn't have to have knives. <laughs> All right? Or stronger teeth or stronger jaws. All right? So, like, wolves don't need knives. <laughs> we do as humans, right? Because we have smaller mouths and we can't chew bones and stuff. So, that's why we invented knives. To be able to cut food into bite-sized pieces. Most people nowadays, the knives they have in their kitchen, don't even cut bread. If metal can't cut bread, it's necessary to get new knives, guys. You need to have that belief yourself so that way you feel uh, like you're doing a favor to the customer. Not like cuckoo would be a nice thing. You really want to get to the point where like, no, this really does make sense. It's like a necessity. They should have good stuff. Because they're going to have to use knives anyway. They might as well have forever guaranteed product that will keep them safe, sharper, last longer, all of the above. I need to get you prepared to uh, see what quality knives cost. Um, and then that way you have more of an appreciation for the price of Cutco. You, some of you will get sticker shock. And you, you'll hear the price of a Vostoff knife and you'll be like, whoa. Which means you have an opinion about the price. Anytime we say, whoa, it means we have a, an opinion. Otherwise we would go, whoa. <laughs> Alright. a side note, never covered it yesterday. When we tell you a story about somebody doing well, pay attention to your level of surprise. If success surprises you, you're probably not going to be successful. Because if something surprises you, it means you're not what? Exactly. You're not expecting it. Fair enough? I get it. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so success surprises us. So when you hear somebody say, okay, this person accomplished this, like somebody sold whatever, two grand, and you're like, no way. I'm like, that's why you won't sell it. <laughs> and I'm not saying that'd be a jerk. I want you to get present to the fact that you have an opinion about what's possible for you before even trying the job. Okay, so do pay attention to that. So don't let success surprise you, please. Just figure out what that person did, and you should do what? 
do it the same thing. You know, that way you get at least what they got or do it better, yeah. All right, so don't let success surprise you, please, because then you're never going to get it. <laughs> All right, so we'll leave it at that. Uh, in knives, like anything else, there's a wide range of quality and price available. So here's what you're going to end up putting in your notes. Leave a little bit of space in between each of these categories. So you have luxury, you have quality, Chicago, cutlery we'll talk about, which would be like an economy knife, kind of, economy. And then you have junk. I might as well write down the economy. When you guys agree that if you buy anything, there's usually these four categories. Junk, economy, quality, luxury. Cars, right? You can buy a beat up, crappy car, it's junk. You can buy, what's an economy car? And it's like, uh, yeah, like, uh, I put, I put Honda in the low end of quality. Like, I think, is, is Neon, still have, Neon, Met Geos, I guess they sold more affordable. All right, so. They're not junk, but they're economy, meaning you're going to pay less money. Okay, quality, don't get me wrong, there's subcategories, okay? Let's not get hung up about this, guys. Let's talk the cars, just for understand the concept, please. I don't want to spend 10 minutes talking about the cars. All right, so within the quality category, there are subcategories. So Honda, Toyota, Mercedes, or Mercedes would be a bit higher. Uh, Audi, BMW would be the higher in quality. Luxury, I'd put Ferrari, Bentley, you know, hundred to $200,000 automobiles. Fair enough? Okay. So Bugatti is like a $2.5 million car, something like that, $2 million plus. So that's definitely a luxury category. Uh, now you'll find, usually the more you spend, you'd expect that the quality increases when you grip, and therefore the durability would also increase as well, okay? So knives, no different. You can buy junk knives for like 10 to 15 bucks at like a grocery store. They're pretty much disposable, right? You can buy knives like Chicago, which are about 35 bucks a pop. That's, uh, I'm just buy some of these around. So you guys have already seen plenty of junk in that box, right? That would fall into the junky knife category. Chicago cutlery, great steel, similar to what we use. Hankels, Vistoff, Sabatier, quality knives, but they made it out of wood and brass that so falls apart. So they don't really have a guarantee on them because they know it's going to break down consistently. And they charge less money initially, but we as consumers would have to do what more often? Yeah, so in the long run, this would cost more. Remember, planned obsolescence. Okay, but get a feel for, that's Chicago cutlery. That'd be like buying an economy car that's not going to last you as long as like a Mercedes or something like that, right? Um, now, quality, write some of these down. Vustoff, W-U-S-T-H-O-F. By some, write down all the ones I put up. <laughs> so actually not some. So W-U-S-T-H-O-F, Vustoff. Uh, Sabatier is French, S-A-B-A-T-I-E-R. Shun, I believe, is Japanese, H-S-H-U-N, Shun, S-H-U-N. And then Hankels, we still talk about H-E-N-C-K-E-L-S, I believe. If you don't spell it correctly, who cares? I think All right, so Vistoff, Zabatier, Sean, Hankels, these all fall into what category? Quality, absolutely. Okay. If I wasn't introduced to Cutco, I'd pay a bit more for quality. I wouldn't go crazy luxury, but I'd want to have better than economy. So you find the most popular knives in the industry worldwide, guys, are these right here, the quality stuff. Uh, knives are a multi, multi, multi billion dollar industry, bless you. Alright, so. <laughs> All right, uh, I usually sneeze at three, so. <laughs> you get each other a unique style of sneezing. But, um, so quality, uh, uh, yeah, they can be bought individually, but they usually do come as full sets, kind of like our homemaker set right here. So we'll speak in terms of like their version of our homemaker and their version of some of their knives overall. All right. So this knife right here, it's made of high carbon surgical stainless steel, very strong steel. <coughs> Uh, it has uh, polypropylene handles. It's imported from Germany. Chefs really do like them because they know how to hone their own edge. If you look up here, I should be able to get through less than a stroke. I sharpened this last night, guys, if you can see. All right, shoot, almost. Hiya! Yeah, I almost killed myself. But the point is that it cuts you with less than a stroke. And we're going to rub it on a plate in a second. You'll see what happens, right? But I do want you to see that it can have a good edge on it. Because, again, I'm not here to bash them. I want you to understand that why these cost more money, okay? Then economy knives, right? So, um, you, they'll last about 10 years. <clears throat> when I say 10 years, forget about the fact that it's knife, but understand that it'll last 10 years. Anything else that you use daily that lasts 10 years, wouldn't you pay a good amount of money on it? All right, you think about that. See, but see how many times you guys get hung up on the fact that it's a knife and you're not used to what they cost? What's ironic though is we'll pay like, what, 100 bucks on Nikes, like we said, and they'll break down after less than a year. Or we'll buy like a video game for $60 and beat it after like a week and never play it again. Isn't that funny? Or we'll go to like, 
you guys get my point, all right? You know, it's like stuff like that where like no big deal, but like, oh, nice, I don't know, it's weird. All right, so whatever. This night cost about 75 bucks on average. And even at that price, that's where P is equal to Q. Now, some of you guys are like, whoa, because you were expecting less, but yet, again, you pay 60 bucks on a video game and you have no problem doing that. So priority's a little, it's like, huh? So forget about that, it's a knife, it lasts 10 years. 10 years, right? You guys get that? That's a decade. <laughs> that's long, it's more than half a lot of your life. Fair enough? All right, so, you know, it's probably maintained again that it'll last that long. So write down one knife, one piece, would be about $75. A uh, full set of like Vistoff, so a 23 piece set, you multiply that out, obviously that would be about $1,500. Roughly the price of a television set nowadays. So again, we just look at it differently. Okay, TV sets probably, I won't use my TV for 10 years, but somebody would use their Vistoff for 10 years. And they, just as often as I turn on the TV, people would use a knife in the kitchen to cut up food on a daily basis. Right. So again, start to be able to develop an appreciation for length of time. Forget about the fact that they're knives. I'm going to show you some ads so you can scope these things out. And also pass them around. So this right here is a Vostoff knife. Get a feel for it. Be careful of the edge. Obviously it's sharp. You just saw me cut through the rope with it. You guys know Macy's? Okay, Macy's is a famous retail store, obviously. This is Vostoff at Macy's. Now, even within these companies, they have different models. Like Mercedes has a whole bunch of different models, right? So knife company, same thing as well. So this picture here is their classic. That one, I think it's called Trident. I don't even know the name of it, but whatever. They're all both good quality, both made by Vostoff, same company, just different models. Uh, this is going to be anywhere from like 40 bucks to 100 bucks, but on sale like 20 something to like 99. All right, and uh, you see different uh, Now, Macy's, do they make any of their products? No. No. You guys know how retail stores work? How do they make their money? They buy and then they up, they, yeah, and they resell essentially. You guys got it? Okay, so the, the items that they pick in their stores are going to be items that sell often. So that's why when you see some of this, knives are, you just never went to Macy's probably to buy knives yourself. Maybe one or two of you did, and I know that you know, some of you have some chef experience, but most of you have never done that before, got it? All right, so anyhow, swap it out. These ads, I'm going to collect them later down on the end here. Martin, I'll give you one too, so one for the back row, one for the front row. Pass it back to Martin. And then at the end, I'll collect them over here from you, Allie, okay? Thank you. All right, so this is Macy's, and this is a bunch of different Vistoff knives. Just scope out a couple of the prices and move on with it. Okay, Mike? And, you know, yeah. We're going to be handing out a whole bunch of ads to you guys. Williams Sonoma, and you guys have ever heard of Williams Sonoma? It's a retail store. It's a bit of a higher end. I'd say it's higher up than a Macy's is. But it's a bunch of household items and things like that. You can register for your wedding there. A lot of people do. They also register at Bloomingdale's and maybe Macy's as well. Uh, but here's a full set, 26-piece set of Vistoff. Uh, they charge thirteen hundred bucks. The regular manufacturer suggested retail price is eighteen hundred dollars. So it's roughly, uh, you know, what forty something inch TV nowadays, like a LED whatever type TV. Okay, so you'll scope these out. The ad I'm going to give you an act you can keep. It's a uh, Henkel's ad. I printed this offline. So Henkel's is another one of our competitors. They're also German, just like Vostoff is German. So this is uh, Henkel's version of our Petit Carver right here, just like that one coming around is Vostoff's version of our Petit Carver. Here's Henkel's version of our uh, French Chef. has a lot more steel. Don't let the fact that it's a little chip taken out take away the fact that it's high quality. Somebody hit the table with it in you know, one of my reps, so I chipped it a little bit. But that's also why Cuck was better, because you know we'd have a guarantee, whereas they don't. But anyway, this is about 120 something bucks because the size of the steel. This one is, again, somewhere in the $80 range, $75, $80 range, something like that. Okay, so anyway, you can get a feel for the competitors. And then here's an ad you're going to keep. This is from William Sonoma, full set of Hankles. This is what's called their Twin Cuisine set, whereas that right there, that's their five-star series. Now, if you know people have like Hankles and whatnot, make sure you compare to the ones that are imported from Germany. They also make ones mass-produced in Asia as well. See right here? See I have the one little dude? This is, yeah, this is, this, uh, this is lower quality, okay? So... Because it's, it's imported from Asia, it's stainless steel, see how it's bent? I don't know if you guys can see that or not. So the ones that Cucko compared to, the ones that are coming around the room now, that's their import from Germany. That's made of uh, high carbon surgical stainless steel, whereas this is just stainless steel. These are cheap, flimsy handles, whereas that has what's called like a snake tang. Or in the picture there, it has a full tang with three rivets, okay? So they're different. Okay, so keep one of these. Get those going down. Let's take some to the back there. You can keep one of these guys. Trade you. <laughs> Alright, pass that down. You can keep one of those. 
paper copy. Who's stepping on my toe? No, no, I get it. That would be a time when you would. Yeah, that's a perfect example. So don't don't say sorry if you make a mistake in the manual, but she stepped on my toe, so yeah. Yeah, I mean, sorry. <laughs> All right, so that's Vistaw for you. That's Hankel's that's coming around. Uh, that knife you have in your hand right now, Alex, the one in your left hand, here it is at Macy's.com. This is a really old ad, so they probably come up in price a little bit, but, you know, $80 at Macy's. So, again, Macy's is going to only stock their shelf with things that are of a high demand. Just like a car dealership, right? You're in, they're going to choose to keep the cars on the lot that sell the most often. They don't want to take up the space, you know, with things that aren't selling. That's why a lot of people would wait for the new model to come out, and then they'll... Towards the end of the previous year, they'll buy the whatever the uh, ones that are remaining on the lot. Uh, Sabatier, not French, I'm probably mispronouncing it, but it's a French company. Uh, this was sold at Bloomingdale's. The way I know, it says the main course at Bloomingdale's in the back of it, so somebody probably registered for their wedding. Now, this reached the end of its life. See the chunk taken out of it? But the person still got over 10 years of usage out of it. Okay? That's why they're good, but not great, but yet still good. Uh, full tang, three rivets. Pretty strong, well, very high carbon surgical stainless steel. All right, so, but eventually it came to an end, obviously. But that's French. You have in your hand. You'll see, if you look closely, you'll see Sabatier on one side, and you'll see the main course at Bloomingdale's on the other. And here, that knife is at Amazon.com. Now, this is really old, this ad, so the price has probably come up a little bit, but either way. Amazon cuts up the middleman, you guys know? So, anywhere from like 40 bucks to 70 bucks. All right, so on average, again, they'd be somewhere in that, that range. Uh, Sabatier knife. Right, Martin, you and anything with plastic, guys, send down that way after you scoped it out a little bit, and I'll apply some later. Yeah. All right, luxury. Luxury, let's talk about luxury a little bit. Okay? So, luxury, uh, you could buy, uh, well, I'll show you. These knives have silver in them, like silver rings and stuff. This is like a Ferrari of the knife industry. It's pretty cool to look at. It'd be like buying a $200,000 car. You guys know people could buy, like, gold toilet bowls if they wanted to. Right? Doesn't make the toilet work better, just makes it luxurious or whatever. So this is even out of Cutco's category. We don't want to be in the luxury category. But it's still fancy to look at. It's cool. Right? This is Japanese, they import it. Uh, it becomes like a family heirloom. The company's been in business since 1872. All right. By the way, Henkel's and those German companies, Henkel's has been around since 1736 or something. It's older than our country. Yeah, isn't that neat? It's like... Yeah, 17-something. Obviously, our country is 1776, right? Yeah. So, anyway, this is a $2,000 knife right there. So, if you're like looking at a uh, Maserati or a Lamborghini. So, we'll look at it. Obviously, they exist, so some people are buying them. So, it'd be somebody who just wants luxury, really. They probably barely use it. I mean, it's just knowing that they have it. <laughs> would probably be the case. Or if they really are a hardcore, hardcore, hardcore chef, then, yeah, I mean, it's not like they're going to throw it away, though. They probably pass this down from one generation to the next. So, thanks for doing that. Check it out, guys. There you go. It has silver, like wine, all the different things. Yeah, these these have already gone around. I think. Yeah, that's luxury right there. There's also three hundred dollar knives in there too. I imagine you guys could buy Tiffany sterling silver handles if you really wanted to. You know, you buy like silverware from Tiffany's that probably is really made of silver. <laughs> yeah, right, it'll cost you a lot more than stuff elsewhere. Uh, so that's luxury. You can buy two thousand dollar knives. I mean, you can buy sets for probably ten to twenty grand if you really wanted to. Okay, so that's obviously not cup hill category. Uh, we fall into the, we want to be known as the best of the what? Oh, exactly. You guys got that? I'm sorry, what does that say? 2000 bucks. 2000 bucks and then full sets, 10 to 20 grand. Yeah. So it's like buying a $200,000 car. Okay. Alright, so let's keep going. Uh, let's go ahead to the comparison. Cutco versus these companies, because this is where I want you now as a salesperson with Cutco to start to see us as great in comparison to them being good. So this is very helpful to do. On one side you'll see it says the seven steps of persuasion, we'll do that next. On this side is what we're going to do first, it's called the, the comparison side. Okay, so take what he's passed around, you're going to put notes on these. Yes. Yeah. Be prepared to do that. Get some of those going down. Great. Let's do this midway. I'm going to take that in the back row. Here. So look at the comparison side. We're going to do first. All right. So as we go through, I'm going to ask you what do you think is better, crack our ankles, and you can follow along here. All 
All right, so first and foremost, most stoffen handles have polypro polypropylene handles. Uh, it's not as strong as our thermal resin. So uh, you'll see this is an old school piece of handles. There's a little crack going down the back of it. Uh, they recommend you hand wash their knives. In fact, here you go. Yeah, so, okay, 1731 Henkels has been in existence since. This is one of their owner's manuals that comes with, like, if you buy Henkels. On the back, it teaches you how to take care of everything. And check it out, guys. Listen closely. Uh, it says, therefore, we recommend the knives be washed by hand. Okay, so they recommend you hand wash the knives. So you want to pick it. Uh, they also talk about, which we'll discuss in a bit, they talk about the knife should be sharpened every single time you use it. Okay, so hand washing because the polypropylene is not as strong. Our, our, it is Cutco dishwasher safe? The answer is yes. Okay, so that's cool to promote to people. So we use thermal resin. It costs us more money to use a thermal resin, but the benefit is passed on to the customer. That's the whole point. Remember the whole cost more, but it's worth it. Here's why. It costs more, but it's worth it. Here's why. And that goes back to this right here, building the value and the expected price. And it's your job is to communicate those things to people. Bless you. Thank you. <laughs> you get a kick out of that. That's good. All right, so uh, straight handle versus exclusive wedge lock. Thanks for being a good sport. <laughs> All right, straight handle versus exclusive wedge lock handle. Okay, so most of their knives, if you look up here, uh, they're rounded. Chefs don't mind. You ever watch chefs? They a lot of times they grab it by the metal, but moms and dads don't. They just grab it by the handle, and they just, you know, so it'd be slippery. That's why with Cutco, it locks a thumb and forefinger to place. Thomas, who invented our handle? Do you guys remember? Lamb. Lamb. Yeah, I just remember the animal. That's why I remembered it when I was in your rep. Okay. So Thomas Lamb locks thumb and forefinger to place. Back in the 40s, he created it. We, uh, he had started, again, selling the design to different... They, they, he, you know, they put it on the end of some tools, like for the garden. Uh, we saw it and said, hey, you know what? We could use that for our knife handle. So we uh, paid him a lot of money through many, many years of using it, and we still use it to this day. 1950s is when we started using it. Uh, that's why, again, yeah, remember this one life here, outdates. This is 1949 Cutco. Uh, it's still in pretty good condition, though, which is exciting. And it's still backed up by the firm, like guarantee. Okay. So it locks them before we're going to place, costs a lot of money, but the, the safety passed on. Remember, 80% of the human hand strength and control between these two digits here. Okay, so communicate that to your customers. I'll appreciate that. 420 versus 440 A steel. Different qualities there. Hidden tang, no rivet versus visible tang, nickel, silver rivets. You guys see how you can't see their tang? Okay. Now it has a good amount of steel in there, but here's the problem. Because it's contained within the handle, it could inevitably what? Fall out. Remember that example of the pipe being driven into the dirt? So if the pipe is four feet into the dirt, you wouldn't just be able to flick it over. All right, but if I rocked it back and forth enough times, would I be able to pull that pipe out of the ground? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So you ever have to take down a tent in the backyard? You rock the tent spikes enough? Okay. Don't do that with street signs against the law, right? Especially if it's like a stop sign or something. It's like serious, that's a serious problem, you know? Like, but, my, but it has my name on the street sign. I'm like, great, well, <laughs> well, actually, that wouldn't be the case because it's, whatever, you get the point. Don't mess with it. Don't break the law, okay? Uh, <laughs> thank you, Joe, <laughs> for giving me the advice. Anywho, all right, so with Cutco, that's not going to happen because we don't, we have a full tang. Here's a raw paring knife from our factory. It's like step two, like 50 steps. Obviously, it's not polished. If I could even snap this. It hasn't even gone through the heat treating. Remember from the Modern Marbles video? So all we do is we take two slabs of thermal resin. We lock it in place with nickel, silver alloy rivets. So there's nothing for the knife to fall out of because it's not really in anything. You guys get that? It's just two slabs on either side. Um, that's why... You know, obviously, 1949 Cutco still intact. I'm going to pass this around again, so once again, you can tell your customers you've handled Cutco that's 60 plus years old, and you now you're developing more of an appreciation for it right, overall. And see how it still is intact, full tank three rivets, even after 60 plus years. Okay, so there you go, 1949 Cutco once again. That's the melon knife, right? Old school butcher knife. Next, saber grind, concave grind. All right, so a couple of differences. First of all, do you see how their knife is not hollowed out by the edge there? Do you see that? See how it's one constant thickness from left to right? Whereas if you look at Cutco, I guess if you look at, or any of our blades, but, ah, uh, that's a good one. I'll show you. It's a hardy slicer. See how the hardy slicer's hollowed out? So we do that with our knives to make them very thin, as thin as possible, but still maintaining strength. Because if something's paper thin, it can pull through food easier. Well, let me exaggerate for effect. Look up here. Could I cut myself with this? No, because it's too thick. <laughs> okay? 
But paper, couldn't I cut myself with a paper? Now we can't make a knife as thin as paper because then it, would, it would, wouldn't cut through meat. So we hollow it out to make it super thin so that way there's less drag as you're pulling the metal through the food. Now, do you guys remember from the video we removed the microscopic burr off the end? You should watch the modern way. If you didn't, we spin a wheel. And so the human eye, like out of package, their knife would look really sharp like a Henkel's or a Gustav. All right, but the human eye, you wouldn't be able to pick up on the fact that there's a little bit of metal still, like a burr, on the end there, which would create a drag as you're cutting through paper. Cuckoo, we take that extra step. Okay, that's why if I grab a paring knife out of this sample kit here, I can shave, like, the back of my hand. I don't necessarily recommend you do this on your demos, by the way. I used to, but don't be all creepy, like, eh, look at me, shave my hand. All right, like, heavy breathing and stuff. Probably not what you want to do with a customer. All right, so, but yeah, here's a cuckoo paring knife, guys. I don't know if you can see this or not. Isn't that interesting? Whoa. Yeah, that's a sharp knife, guys. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> I'm a D to hand for. Alright, so, and then a piece of paper here, you guys can see. You saw it from the video. If you didn't, here, you need. Okay, it's very sharp, obviously. Make sure they don't rub these against the cutting board back and forth. Remember, traditional straight edges are to either be used up and down or in the air, because that's called the air knife. All right, so very, very sharp. So we remove the microscopic burr off the end, right? and that's what allows even our straight edge. Remember, that there's a kacha test. It's an industry-wide test where they saw it through sandpaper, and then they can measure how long the edge is retained after it goes through a certain amount of layers of sandpaper. And so add a package, cut, go, is sharper, obviously. So that's exciting for the customer. Uh, the next thing we have is the brush metal finish. That's what they use. We do four-step mirror finish process. So side by side, especially on that old knife of cutco that went around or is going around, a couple things to look at. See side by side? See how we you can see your reflection in the hardy slicer on your left, but in theirs you can't see your reflection? So don't worry, you guys look good today. All right, so now if, it, if you can't see your reflection, you guys know how mirrors work? It means it already has scratches in it to begin with because the light gets diffracted. Right. To cast an image, it has to be able to reflect exactly back on you. So that's why you can see a reflection here with Cutco. So we take an extra two steps. That costs money. We pay people to do that by hand. Now, not everything we do with Cutco is by hand. There's still robots that do a lot, but there's still many steps all by hand. Every single blade by hand, they remove the burr. Every single, you know, there's, there's a lot of different things. Every blade is by hand. Made, they make sure it's level. So like the whole series of steps, that costs a lot of money, guys, right, to do that. We pay an artisan to do that. I like to use you an artisan because these people literally have to spend many years to even be able to develop a mastery or have their eye be able to even pick up on, you know, the fact that, because like, I see them up there, I'm like, that's so cool. I've been to the factory eight times. So it's really neat what these people are capable of producing and doing. Factory workers love us because we sell enough product for them to put their kids through college, and we love them because they make a good enough product that we can then go sell. So that's how we all get each other's back. They do their job, make a good, outstanding product, and we do our job, we enthusiastically let people know the product exists all right, and sell it properly. All right, next thing you have, um, straight edge versus our double durable edge. Now listen, I don't really care that their friend chef is straight edged, because how will this knife be used? It's an up and down, right? You guys get that? So it's okay that they have a traditional straight edge. You've got to still maintain an edge on it. That's not the problem. More so, what I'm concerned with, if you look at Vosso, this is their version of our petite carver. So how are these blades used? Back and forth. And this is Henkel's version of our petite carver. So every one of these blades will be used to slice like meat and stuff back and forth. So let's do the plate test. I'll do it for you so you can then talk about it on your demos. I'm going to purposely use this petite carver. We've been using this for many training groups. So it just shows that it's that much more durable. You guys get it? So, You'll see in a bit the points have definitely gotten abused. They're worn down a bit. But there's enough of the three edges that'll cut through properly. You guys remember a couple minutes ago I almost lost my hand trying to like push down on this? But do you saw it go through, you know, I'll just I want you I want you to see that it's sharp, and then we're gonna rub it on a plate and the edge will be gone. Alright? And then we're gonna rub cuckoo on a plate, and it'll be retained. So once again. Alright, it's pretty much one stroke. Ow. Okay, good. And then cuckoo, petite carver. Okay, so they both, let's just, well, cut a bit better already, but let's just assume both crisp cuts, right? Because out of package, this would make a, a crisp cut. But then you buy a steak, right? And you put it on a plate. If you can't see, you stand up, guys, right? Just make sure you can see what I'm doing. Don't do this on your demos. The customer's like, why are you rubbing my plates? I'm showing you. All right, so you can then talk about it on your demonstrations. 
All right, so you take the knife, just one, two, three, four, five, even just six strokes, right? Check this out. Amazing. All right, I can probably, like, I'm, yeah. Okay, I'll probably start a fire before I get through. Okay, so the edge is gone. Fair enough. Now, cocktail, I'll do the same. Oh. Hi, yeah. Just kidding. All right, so one, two, three, four, five. I can do it in. You guys get the idea, right? I could beat the hell out of it. Heck out of it, excuse my language. Cool. And you know why. All right, I'll pass it around. Again, the points are getting abused, but there's still a lot of the what remaining. Three miniature straight edges, okay? That's the power of that. So please don't rub your finger on it, obviously. But you'll see the points are definitely getting pushed down a little bit. Now, I could still use that for several more years, in fact, of rubbing it against this plate. And it's still, but eventually I'll have to send it back to the company, obviously, and get them to recarve the edge. But the point is that this edge is now what? Oh. Yeah, okay. So in, in your manual, you know, where you do talk about disadvantage of other knives, Okay, you talk about now the plate test. Be like, remember the part of the bottom of the page, I think it's three, where it says that even quality knives rub down on plates, go dull. So that effect. You're going to say in training, my manager rubbed Vustoff, that's what this is, on a plate, and the edge was removed. Okay? And that's why if you look at Henkel's owner's manual, uh, right here, it says a few strokes on every on either side of the blade every time you use the knife will keep it sharp at all times. Okay, so they recommend you sharpen it every time you use them. Not like buying a car with a toolbox built into the dashboard and it said every time you drive, fix the engine. Isn't it funny? Like like yet yeah, this doesn't set up a red flag until I bring that to your attention, but it would not be the same thing as this. Alright? And they expect you to know how to use a butcher steel. Chef's not how to use this. I don't personally. Okay? Uh, a small percentage of the population actually knows how to use this. You know, the Okay, so this is what they recommend the average household every time you use a knife, they say figure this out. And they actually show you a perfect 20 degree angle. If my life depended on me, I probably wouldn't be <laughs> dependent on it. I'm not sure if I'd learn how to do this. Eventually I probably could, but it would take me time. But I don't want to have to do that, okay? Just like my car, I don't want to have to fix my engine every time I drive. Not going to happen. So, that's a big difference, the edge types. We have our double durable edge, they have traditional straight edges on their sawing motion knives. Sharpen after every use, whereas we have the forever sharpness guarantee. Limited warranty versus forever guarantee. To me, that's the biggest difference. They have a limited warranty. Here's Henkel's warranty. It's very similar to almost any company. Companies will protect against defects, guys, right? So if you bought a pair of shoes, you brought it home, before you even use them, if the sole is falling off, you get a new one, right? Because that's defective. But once you start to use the shoes and they wear down, and you just use them until they, they're done. You guys get it? So most companies are like that. Same with knives, same with clothing, same with like, cars even. Right? After a certain length of time, you just use the car until it breaks down at the end of it. Right? You have to go buy a new car. So this is Henkel's guarantees against defects. So that's good at least. But then it says they do not cover wear from normal usage. All right, so this is one of the Henkel's knives that we used for years. I actually had to go buy another one or get a hold of another one. Look up here. So I used to use this for the plate test, but I sharpened it so many times, see how it's hollowed out? So I can't even get the edge back on. Unfortunately, this, we're about at the point where that I can't get this one on either. I'm having trouble getting the edge back on. That's why it took me so much force earlier. Okay, then I'll have to get a new one for showing trainees. I then got a new one, but now this one has also got two hollowed out, okay? So right here, this is about 160 bucks in, in Henkel's right here, all right? So now, would they give me a new one? No, this is wear and tear, yeah. Okay. Same with this, right? Tip snapped off, a little crack going on the back of it. Did I set this one around yet? No. Okay. So you'll see a little crack going on the back of it. If you do not have pressure, the handle will loosen up a little bit. That's the problem with the whole, you know, snake tang versus full tang. Okay, so these are all issues. Are they going to give me a new one just because one of my reps whacked this against the table? No. Now, is that little chip taken out? That's it. I'm on my own. All right? It's garbage now. Uh, whereas Cutco, he has one once again, just to review, forever guarantee. <clears throat> Imagine if other things had forever guarantee. See, sometimes we hear it so often that we get desensitized to it. It's a big freaking deal, guys. Right? The fact that you can use it every day and then if it breaks, you're given new ones. That's exciting. Imagine you had a forever guarantee on your cars and you had like some sort of card where if the car were broke, they give you a new one free or if you technology updated or whatever, or like oil, gas, all that was free. Imagine how cool that would be. It would be a pretty expensive car, wouldn't it? 
Imagine you could buy like a, some sort of coupon where you, every time your cell phone were to break, you get new cell phones for free. Think about how, much, how many cell phones you guys have already bought in your lifetime. You guys are, you know, anybody here older than 35? <coughs> Bless you. So I'm the oldest in the room, man. So raise your hand if you bought at least two cell, you owned at least two cell phones in your life. Higher. All right, three or more. Four or more since you started using cell phones? Because five or more? Does anybody have like a high number that you almost kept track of or approximately? Seven, Seven cell phones. Ten different phones. Do you guys get on average they're about what two hundred dollars each, something like that? Some low or some higher, but that's about two grand then right there. Isn't that fascinating? Now, well, is she done using cell phones? No, you're probably gonna go through from now till you're seventy five years old, eighty years old, all right? You know that's the average lifespan. Here's my point, because imagine if you could have bought a forever guaranteed cell phone. Like a truly forever guaranteed one that like, you know, any damage or whatever for free forever. That'd be pretty exciting. Wouldn't you have to pay a lot of money on that though? The answer is yes, guys. You get that? Okay. So like anytime something lasts longer, we're used to paying more money on it. Like if you had two items in a store and one lasted ten years, one lasted five years, you'd pay double on the what? Ten year version as opposed to the five year version. That's just the way our minds work as consumers. Right? The longer something lasts, the more it's gonna cost, you know, overall for somebody. Alright, so next thing I want to do with you guys. I did this already. Alright, so let's go to the seven steps to persuasion. So flip over this document. So not manipulation, but persuasion. Why do I want you to be good at persuasion? Well, you'll be better leaders that way. You'll be leaders of groups, class projects, uh, dating, and, and you know, do you guys get you persuade somebody to date you, and vice versa, they persuaded you to date them. Do you guys get in the interview, you persuaded me and Jack to accept you to the position. All right, so that's how persuasion works. To me, it's getting somebody to think something or do something because it makes sense to them. It's logical, it's exciting, and all that. So please learn to be amazing at persuasion to do good for people. The first thing, to be able to persuade, you must believe you're helping somebody. So I have a problem persuading you guys to go next door to the what? The gym. The gym. I'm not actually going to do that, but meaning because going to the gym does what? Gives you health, right? Well-being. Like, you last longer, your life. Have fun, Jack. Taking Stephen Mann field training? Yes, field training. Thank you. Oh, yeah, let's get Soup to do that, too. Have Sarah call Soup, see if he can field train. Okay? Good call. I love it. Jackson, field trains when you guys go watch people do demos. You want to get that culture going like right away. All right? That's super important. Um, and Jack has a special way to win the Bahamas trip, so he's finding a way to win Bahamas. And you guys, you guys know it's for 20 grand. It's for Fast Start, but it's also for the month. I'm not supposed to tell you that until after Fast Start, but <laughs> too late. Me, you do 20K for January, that's how you win the Bahamas. I win it by us doing 75K as an office. So I like to go with like a lot of us to the Bahamas. That'd be freaking cool. <laughs> All right, so it's just fun. <laughs> uh, go on VK. Yeah, it's like it's like imagine you had a lot of all stars like on your soccer team, and then by them becoming all section or all state, you got to go on a trip together. To me, it's the same idea. All right, so but this is our cuckoo team instead of our soccer team. Back to what I was saying. Um, now I wouldn't persuade you guys to do drugs, right? Because that would do what? It would it hurt you. Okay. So my point is that when you're persuading, you need to really do know that it's impacting the person positively. Right? So that's why you always have to be responsible for your product conviction. You guys get it? Because right? if you have product conviction, you're going to want people to use Cutco. So take responsibility. Uh, if you have to, every now and then, take out your trimmer and cut a freaking tomato <laughs> yourself. Be like, wow, that's cool. All right? Cut some leather on your like, wow, that's sharp. All right? So you watch a video on cutco.com. There's like chefs cutting stuff. It's like that's neat. All right. So the more product conviction you have, you're just going to you're just going to want people to own it. All right. And you're going to tell them why it makes sense, and they're going to have fun. They'll feed off your energy, and you'll sell a lot of cutco guys. You don't need to be technically sound. Well, I take that back. You don't need to be ultra technically sound. Okay. Like as long as you're like somewhat fundamentally sound, you're like good to go. All right. So you don't have to be perfect by no means. Uh, write this down on top of the seven steps of persuasion. Put down this right here. 20% never, 20% always, 60% are on the fence. 20% never, 20% always, 60% are on the fence. Okay, so again, 20% never, 20% always, 60% are on the fence. What I mean by that is whenever you're persuading somebody to do anything, they, they usually will fall into one of those three categories. So there's a percentage of people that will never be persuaded to do whatever it is you're talking about, and this could be anything, right? You you uh, 
You can call somebody up and be like, hey, I'll give you a million dollars to let me come hang out for 10 minutes. They'll be like, no, thank you. And they just fall into the never category, right? All these people, you can call somebody like, hey, I'm going to come over and burn your house down. They'll be like, oh, yeah, come over. We'll make schmoes. Uh, you know, because <laughs> yeah, they fall into an always category. I'm exaggerating. I, you know, definitely here for effect, okay? Now, fence sitters, those are the only ones that we really want to focus on. Why? Because you really have no influence over the first two categories. You guys get it? Fence sitters, you do. You guys get the visual? They're on the fence saying, hey, I'll go on either side, but you have to give me a reason why. So I'll go on your side of the fence, but you have to be, you have to give me a reason why. Write down what influences fence sitters. Get your pen going here. Write down confidence. Confident. Write down confident. You're, you're writing down what influences fence sitters. Write down enthusiasm. So confident, enthusiasm. Write down answering concerns in advance. Answering concerns in advance. So confident, enthusiasm, answering concerns in advance. Also put down three to five attempts, meaning it's going to take you three to five attempts, traditionally, to persuade people. Three to five attempts. And here's the, uh, one of the pitfalls with persuasion, is that we think fence-sitters are sometimes what? So then we feel weird about making multiple attempts, because the action is making multiple attempts. We make it mean, I'm being pushy. You guys get it? Now, I'm being pushy, is that a fact or an opinion? It's an opinion about an action. You get it? Now listen, I understand. In the face of a never, the demo's over. And this can mean this doesn't have to just be cut. This can be anything. But it, but if it's more than twenty percent of the time, you're then mistaking fence sitters for never people. So it's okay to make multiple attempts, but you have to hear fence sitters a certain way. So if I give you a concern as a customer, if I say, "Hey, I'll buy later," let's say. What well, you want to hear before the I'll buy later, you want to hear I like Cutco, but I'm not sure why I should buy it now. Do you guys get it? But you want to hear the I'll buy Cutco. That way you view it as a yes with some sort of condition or circumstance or some sort of concern that you'd have to get taken care of. In the face of a no, it's over. I'm not going to tell you every, there's nothing you could do. You guys get it? Like in the face of a no, that, that would, I'd even agree. My opinion would be that. But most people, or 60% at least, are on the fence. It's okay to make multiple attempts because they're not saying they don't like the product. There's just something in the way. Okay, so if I say, you know, uh, my eyes are fine, does that mean I like Cutco? Yes, but I don't know why I should place what I'm using. But it still means that they like the product line guy. Okay, you can see the difference? But again, too often, especially younger people, they feel like, oh, I'm being pushy. All right, but in actuality, you have to make multiple attempts. Think about, get, think about your friends, having them... You know, um, I don't know, come out and hang out if they're feeling all bummed out, right? They're like, come on, come hang out. You're going to have fun. Get off the couch. Come on. All right? Think about it. You have to make multiple attempts, don't you? Think about how, you know, to get somebody to do a favor for you. And, and, and clearly, communicating the favor, don't you have to make several attempts sometimes? I know that with me, if you guys ask me to do your favor, I go, are you sure it has to be me? So I want to check to make sure because I, you know, I, you guys know I do a, several different things each day with my time. Now, if you say, no, Joe, I really need you to do it, guess what I'd say? I'd say, sure, go, yeah, absolutely. Now, how many attempts is that an example of? Two, okay. So just the point is, in most cases, it takes multiple attempts to persuade guys. And you get used to that. Get, get the hang of that, get comfortable with it. I guess that's really what we're looking for here. All right, because if you learn to persuade the fence centers at 60% plus the 20% always, what's the total? Aha! Which, what's our closing ratio? You had a 10, now you understand it. Now, if you drop the ball on the fence centers, if you're ineffective, you're only going to get a sale 20% of the time, which is why somebody would be below average. So, you get this? so that's how you know, psychology of persuasion works. You know, something I neglected to review with you guys yesterday, let's just focus on what works and what doesn't work. I stay away from right and wrong in this office because it creates drama when people try to save face and like protect themselves and get all defensive. So either it's effective or ineffective. So at the end of a demo, either you get a sale or you don't. If you get a sale, that's effective. If you get a no sale, that's ineffective. It's great to use the word failure, but you got to get rid of the meaning. Remember that stuff? So if you get a sale, you succeeded. If you get a no sale, you failed in that particular instance. It doesn't mean anything other than what you make it mean. All there is to do is learn, right? What's missing that would make a difference? You're going to hear me say that a lot to you. Okay, like, hey, Martin, what's missing that would have had you be effective? We want to stay away from this whole right-wrong. So you see how that creates drama? 
you're bad. Because in that moment, you're not going to listen to the lesson. You guys see how you're going to try to like sugarcoat something or like hide. So you want to get rid of the drama. It either works or doesn't work. Have that be the way we, we go through life. Because then we can eliminate a lot of that awkward stuff, that drama stuff, that confrontation crud, you know, stuff. So if the pen cap is on, this doesn't what? Work. If I take the pen cap off, it works. Okay? Doesn't work? Works. I'm not going to see, oh, I'm not going to go like, oh, bad pen. Bad marker. You suck. How dare you? You guys get that? I'm exaggerating you know, a little bit here too. But that's how we are with people, right? So if you call me up, get rid of all the embarrassment. It doesn't mean anything, right? So it's like either you were effective or you weren't. When it comes to referrals, either you get a full sheet or you don't. If you get a full sheet, that's effective. If you don't, that's ineffective. Pretty basic, right? So, at bat, baseball. You get a hit or you don't. Keep it simple. If you don't get a hit, don't cry about it. Let's just figure out what's missing, right? What's missing that would have had you hit the ball. Now, the only way this is going to work is that we have to take responsibility for our success or lack thereof. Too often when we succeed, we love to take credit. It's like, I sold. Right? But if the customer doesn't buy, it's like, they didn't buy. <laughs> All right, so it should either be I sold or I didn't. Keep it in the I, because then we can ask, what could I do differently? Too often, it's like, I got an A. And then when you do not you do poorly, the teacher stinks. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? But then if you do get like an F or a C or D, whatever, you want to take responsibility and own it without it affecting your confidence, because that way you can ask, hey, what could I have done differently when it comes to studying? How could I prepare differently for this task? Because if you blame the teacher, you're not going to brainstorm ways to get better. Okay. That's why we have you check in after each what? De well, demo or appointment, right? Ideally, yeah, it would be a Sally shot. But yeah, it won't always be that way. I remember 80% success, right? But you check in with us after each appointment so that way we can ask what's missing and truly adjust the scope. Yeah. And that's why we call it adjust the scope PDI when you call in after each demo. And then when you check in in the morning, that's more like game plan PDI, we call that, like reviewing your strategy and stuff like that. All right, so two types of check-in with two different intentions, which we'll review throughout time. Uh, so yeah, you guys persuade us to accept you. So let's use that as an example. Let's go through the seven. You ready to go through the seven steps now so you get more of an appreciation, you get better at persuading? Because so when you're the owner of a company, you have to persuade the people to be bought in or to your corporate vision and your mission. All right, please persuade your nieces and nephews to live a, a healthy lifestyle or your, or your younger siblings. Okay, so use persuasion to do good for people, ultimately, is what you're looking to do. Uh, number one is what? Sound. Yeah, and you guys are going to hang a report, write this down, put down trust, put down credibility. So you have trust, credibility, put down relationship. This is all under the banner of rapport, that, number one. So trust, credibility, relationship, put down company history. That kind of ties into like credibility. So it's all that beginning part stuff. Write down you want to be an advisor. An advisor. I covered this briefly yesterday, but I'll review it today again. So in order to advise somebody, you have to, in order for you to let somebody advise you, don't you have to trust them? Okay. So if you, if you don't like somebody, you suspect something about them, you're not going to take their advice. If you like somebody, that's funny, because two people give you the exact same advice, you're like, shut up, and this person, I'm like, well, thanks for the advice. You know? They, they both told you the same thing. It has to do with your opinion of that person, your relationship with that person. Next. So your opinion, your relationship, that sort of thing with that individual, guys. So you want to be able to give advice to people. That's why the beginning part of the demo, remember like the first 10 minutes is all about here's why I'm working, tell me about your family, nice place. You get connected, guys, to them. That's why I had you yesterday build rapport with each other. Yeah, heck yeah. Okay, so we're creating that type of environment where people are connected. Uh, and the idea would be, you know, you build rapport with me too. Good, you get it. Um, and so, number two is what? Yeah. Okay, so by the way, just a parallel to the interview process, so you have a real example to learn from. Uh, within 30 seconds, I decided whether I was going to accept you or not. So, remember we make up a decision, and then we take action to be what? Yeah, so if I decide I like the person, they're going to do well, I'll look for reasons to accept them and like them, okay? If I decide the person's not a good fit, I'm going to look for reasons to reject and say, okay, this isn't a good fit. So first impressions are very important. People do make a decision right away. So handshake, eye contact, smile, enthusiasm. Your resume is kind of like company history. So you kind of you sell yourself just like you sell Cutco. It's the same psychology, really. 
All right, so persuasion is persuasion, whether you're persuading somebody to hire you or you're persuading somebody to buy a cocktail, guys. So uh, be very intentional when you're first meeting people. You know, be responsible for how they view you, how they listen to you. Be responsible for the level of trust that you have established. Within that first few seconds, it's really critical to keep that in mind. All right. Uh, number two, identify job problems. Uh, write down wood, plastic. Write down carbon, steel, stainless steel. So that's the whole part of the demo where you'd be reviewing all those things. So you have wood, plastic, carbon, steel, stainless steel. Okay, now on a job interview, you'd want to find out what the problems are with the company. You wouldn't use the exact words probably, but you know, you'd want to find out what's missing. Like, hey, why are you looking for new people? What are the biggest things you look for? What's your corporate strategy for next year? Because inevitably, you're going to want to position yourself as the solution, right? This is, you know, in, in, in a bit, you want to find out, you know, you're going to present yourself that way. In our equation, the solution is Cutco, not nice, exactly. All right, so number three is what? Yeah, so it's not enough that society as a whole is having a problem with knives. They themselves need to be. So that's why you have them get out their own what? Uh, yeah, their own their own knives, and they do a head-to-head -head comparison against Cutco. All right, so that's why you should not be doing demos in people's office spaces right away. Right? Uh, you do demos in people's kitchens. Don't have them come to your house because they don't have their knives. So set yourself up powerfully, especially as you're getting through your first few promotions, guys. From now until three thousand dollars in sales, I'm gonna make sure you're set up like powerfully. Even if you screw up a, like a lot, you're still gonna. We want to make sure you still get sales because between now and 3K, keep in mind you're shaping your yeah as to what how the job's gonna go. So I have to be careful about that. That's once again, remember bumper bowling, training wheels on a bicycle, t-ball for somebody. Remember layups versus mid-court shots. So later today, I'm gonna give you detailed direction on who you should be calling first. Uh, I'm gonna have you go through your list, and I'm just gonna have you do what I would do if I was new all over again. Because you guys could give me your lists. I could call those people and drop your name, yeah, and they'd be referrals for me. So I wouldn't call everybody you know, I would tell you what I would do, which allowed for me to be wildly successful. So if you do what I do, you'll get what I, I you know, received or got. Gotten? That's not a word. What I've gotten. I had, thank you. <laughs> i gotten it. <laughs> right? Awesome. Good thing I sell knives as well. <laughs> I don't need to be tested on my grammar. Uh, but public speaking, yeah, I do public speaking. Well, hey, I have your best interest in mind, so you're forgiving of me making mistakes, remember? Now, if you don't focus so much on looking good, the audience doesn't mind if you screw up, because then they know you're there to make a difference for them. The second you come across as a person that cares more about you while you're public speaking, the audience is going to be uh, really hard. <laughs> yeah, they're like, every little thing, all right. <laughs> all right, so if, as long as you're taking care of people, people are very forgiving. You guys have, uh, of, uh, you know, how you carry yourself and all that stuff, right? Anyway, uh, number four is offer a what? Solution. Yeah, so it's Kako Frost on a job interview, it's you, and dating, it's you. Go offer yourself as a solution, you know? It's like, hey, tell me what you look for, and, you know, significant other, great. All right, so, so with Kako, you offer a solution. It's very easy, because there's a lot to talk about. You're not, like, making stuff up. It's a good edge. <laughs> it's a good deal, right? Great guarantee. So where it says offer a solution, write down features and benefits. Write down guarantee. So you have features and benefits. You have guarantee. Okay, what's number five? Yeah, so you're going to have an ad that has like shun knives on it and Bustoff, and you're going to compare it so that way they have a more desire to get cut out. Right, they also understand and appreciate why our expected price should be higher, right? Cool. All right, so that's compare possible. We call it a price comparison. We also what we call it. You should write down price comparison there. That's what we call it. Price comparison. All right. And then number six is give a. Yeah, write down urgency there. Urgency. Also write down first call special. First call special. I'll tell you what I mean by that in a bit. First call special. So in a bit, by somebody buying today, you can offer them some free stuff. Depends on how big the order is, obviously. Okay, I'll teach you the rules for it tomorrow. 
but just know it creates urgency. So it's like, I'll like, by you buying that set today, I'll give you a, a free ice cream scoop. Creates an excitement for today. It's pretty obvious, guys, right? So because that battles against the whole problem with folding memory, it gives them incentive to do it now versus later, and you know the significance of that now. So first call special, and then write down folding memory there, because that's really what it applies to. Folding memory is a good review for you. So if you're persuading somebody to join a club or something in, in college, or you need somebody to do something as part of your group project, don't put off, you know, be like, oh, we'll just talk about it tomorrow. While you have the free time and you have them there, you got to act now, because between now and then, they'll lose sight of the the value of whatever it is you're talking about. Okay, so, <clears throat> you know, and you also want to learn to be more assertive, not aggressive, but assertive. You ever notice that a lot of times it takes you more time to organize the freaking group meeting than it does to even get the work done? Don't you hate that? Like, oh, well, that's a little severe word, hate, but you know, like the emails back and forth. It's like, somebody just be assertive, please, for crying out loud. So Cutco is amazing leadership training for you guys. Uh, to be able to take charge of such scenarios. Not aggressively, but assertively. You have to learn to be assertive in order to really succeed in life. You have to be assertive in order to even make multiple attempts. You also have to be persistent, but not pushy. Two different things. If you're passive, not going to work, guys. Imagine as a school teacher, hey guys, um, is it okay if I give you homework? Is that okay? You get eaten alive, man. You know, if you're a school teacher like that, right? Now, teachers aren't aggressive, they just give direction, don't they? Hey guys, tomorrow's a test. You're going to be on, read these two chapters, be prepared, you're going to take the test right when you come in. Was there any question mark in what I just said? No, so it was just a series of directions, instructions, that's assertive, telling people like exactly what to do. When you came in for the interview, wasn't it the same thing? Hey guys, how you doing? I'm Joe Ginelli. Sign in here, grab an application, have a seat there. When you're done filling that out, we'll ask you some questions, see if we'll have you stay for the full interview or not. Are there any questions there? Could you imagine you came in and I was like, hi, I'm, I'm Joe, is it okay if I interview you? And maybe if it's okay, can you fill this out and can you sit there? Is that okay to sit there? You'd be like, what the hell's going on here? When yeah, you'd be like, what the hooey? <clears throat> now it's not a grass, I'm like, get in here. Imagine I yanked you in the arm. <laughs> Raw. <laughs> All right? If I press charges then, you know? It's like, so please learn to be what? Assertive. Assertive, okay? Now some of you guys, you perceive that as like weird, but yet you then don't get the value of being a leader then. Okay, so practice it, get comfortable with it, you know, giving direction. So with your customers, don't be like, um, can we cut rope now? Remember, voice inflecting up is definitely not assertive, okay? It's like, hey, Judy, you know, get out your old knives, we're going to do a head-to-head -head comparison. Here, I'm going to have you do this. See, I'm going to have you do this. Not, do this now, Judy, okay? But not like, is that okay? With referrals, you got to give direction. Hey, Judy, here's this approach to the novel support part. Go ahead, write down everybody you know. It could be anybody. Not, will you do this? Is that okay? All right, yeah, don't do that, please. Okay, that doesn't work. So, the thing I love about Cutco is just, you learn life skills, we just happen to use knives as the vehicle. Okay, but it's the life skills that we really want you to gain. I think you want to gain those too. Right? Um, don't get me wrong, the knives are fun, the, the money's great, the prizes are cool, but I think the life, I know the life skills will stay with you forever. <laughs> But you got to step outside your comfort zone. Yeah? Okay. Uh, last step is what? Yeah. Oh, uh, so, you know, write down comfortable there. Write down comfortably. Okay? Write down, you have to be persistent there. Not pushy, but persistent. Because it's going to take three to five attempts once again, right? Also put down, uh, okay, so put down comfortable. Put down persistent. Put down committed versus emotionally attached. Did I talk about I talked about that really briefly. Yeah, it doesn't hurt to review it though. You want to be committed but not emotionally attached, guys. Okay? Committed but not emotionally attached. So you want to be fully committed to the moaning. And that's why you need to be committed in order to make multiple attempts. If you're not committed, you're not going to be willing to do that. But if you look up freedom in the dictionary, freedom, it talks about like without hindrance or constraint. So you want to give person the freedom to choose without them thinking you're going to get pissed either way, right? But yet still clearly communicate that you're committed to the morning cut code, though. Because once you detach yourself emotionally from the equation, the decision solely is about them, not about you. Do you get that if we get upset at somebody, if they decide yes or no, and they know we'd get upset, it's more about what? 
us in our own emotional state. So it takes away from their ability to choose freely. Right? So you want to start to keep track of that. You'll find that people will actually be more accommodating and, and, and take your requests or honor them or take your advice if they know that you're okay if they say yes or no. People will usually say yes if they're okay, if they know you're okay with them saying no. I don't know if that makes sense or not, based on what I'm communicating. Because okay? once they know that you're not like all like, oh, this is, it makes or breaks me. All right, they usually then listen to what you have to say to them. I guess they're with you. All right, it was cool. All right, so, um, yeah, I was just, I was emotionally attached, so I was committed. Allie was like, I'm not sure my scheduling, and I have a trip, and whatnot. And what's great about her, she came in open-minded. First of all, she came in communicating her concern, but she was open-minded to changing her what? Mind. You get that? Which makes her a champion, because she's not like, because then, otherwise it becomes more about stubbornness than it does about the most effective decision. All right, and it's also useful for you to be able to learn time management skills. It's really, really cool. All right, so I acknowledge you for you know being you know so um, but so what was my point on story? Oh, so talking to you, I basically she gave her the freedom to what? Choose. Choose. You get that? Because she was like, oh, should I do it the summer or now or the summer or now? And then ultimately she's like, you know what, Joe? I trust you. Why don't you give me advice? I go, I'll give you advice, but ultimately you have to have the freedom to choose. So the point is, I wouldn't have been upset either way. Okay, which allowed for you to clearly look at your options and be like, oh, all right, this is cool. <laughs> but if it, if I had been all emotional about it, you probably wouldn't be here right now. You get it? Okay. Thanks for not minding me using that story. Okay, it's helpful. Because it gives everybody a specific example of the group. So. And she loves psychology too. She's like, that's neat. I learn stuff like that. So ultimately, just thought, you know, be open minded to, once somebody brings more information to the table, be open minded to digesting the new information and then make a choice. Kind of just makes sense, right? It's like, all right, well, now that you bring that to my attention, okay. <laughs> all right? But too often, it's like, well, I've already made up my mind. Your parents ever do that to you? I've already made up my mind. And it's a little frustrating, isn't it? But then don't be guilty of doing the same thing. <laughs> right? So I made up my mind. Yeah, but we've already communicated why that not the most effective decision. It doesn't matter. I made up my mind. I'm like, what? <laughs> so it's more important to just be stubborn than it is to take a look at value added? Whatever. All right, so those are seven steps to persuasion. Okay? Apply them to do good. Like Spider-Man. <laughs> What does that say? Something with responsibility comes power, or blah, blah, blah. Yeah, power comes responsibility. Okay, good. Thanks. That's super bad. Oh, is it? Yes. All right, well, whatever. <laughs> Did it communicate the point? Then good. <laughs> all right. Again, embarrassment doesn't work in my world, so it's all good. As long as I get the point across. Another important point is that we start with the highest, um, uh, one of the biggest sets dropped out from there. Because customers aren't going to be like, gee, could I get something bigger? They usually would say, could I get something smaller? So write this down as well on the bottom of that piece of paper. Uh, here's a good line to memorize. Let's find a set that meets your needs but fits in your budget. And I'll reference this again later, but write down, let's find a set that meets your needs but fits in your budget. Okay, so the idea is to drop down until you find a set that meets their needs but at the same time fits in the budget, which means you start from high, drop low. You ever notice that default sorting on computers is usually the most expensive thing first? Okay, that's the default for websites. Like if you go ahead and search for like cars, they'll show you the fully loaded one first. If you search for computers, they'll show you the best computer first. And then where, oh, by the way, in a computer catalog, where are the accessories usually? In the end, in the end, because those are add-ons, right? Just like, you know, when you uh, customize, you buy whatever computer you like first, and then you decide the add-ons. Car dealerships are the same way, right? You decide on what model you like, and then you add on the what? The options. And then usually they quote it like an extra few bucks a month. Because ultimately, that's most people, the way they operate, they have to decide not whether they can afford the overall price of the car. They, the way we operate is can we afford the monthly payment. I'm not saying that's the best way to do it. I'm just saying that's what, just what most people do, right? Like, I, I, a lot of people probably don't even know what the hell their house is worth, but they need to know whether they can afford the monthly mortgage. Okay, the monthly mortgage. And that's kind of, because we get a lot of people, like, you know, they know their own income on a monthly basis. Like, okay, well, here's my expenses, and here's this, and here's that, right? So, talk goes the same way. Now, as you become more confident and comfortable with the material, you want to start up as high as possible. Shoot, we have some reps that go, hey, here's the blue binder, the entire binder. <laughs> right? They quote them a price based on that, and then they just pull stuff out. I'm not going to teach that to the group as, like, the starting point for... You know, I, I basically, we start off with the basic set, even though we tell them what the complete set is, and then we drop down from here. Remember I told you yesterday the basic set's actually three items? So homemaker plus eight, five, that's where a fork goes, so that wouldn't be stuck there, right? 
uh, super shears, homemaker plus eight, and kitchen tools. Okay, those three combined in this office are a basic set. Okay, we start off there. So if that's a little out of their price range, you could be like, can you do without the kitchen tool? I'm having you see these out loud, guys, because you're going to get used to it. And can you do without the shears? Just get the knives. Right, the homemaker plus eight is what it's called. Uh, and that way it also makes that price now seem smaller because you began with a bigger package, bigger set. Exactly. Good. All right. Now, I will give you the price of the bigger sets. You decide whether you're comfortable and confident. Because, again, each of you has your own opinion about pricing. Price is price. We each have our own opinions. But ideally, you would begin higher up because then it would make the whole basic set seem even what? Smaller. Puny. Okay, you get it? And you start, it starts to show up on the radar screen that way. All right, so I'll teach this to you as we go through. Remember, I stapled in sheets as I went around, page 8, 9, and whatever. Okay, that's where all this stuff will be discussed. But. Okay, great. So let's go back to the training manual. I want to go through and point out where we build value. Okay? And then we're going to dive into page uh, 8 and 9. Page 8 and 9 will be uh, the first thing you need to memorize. It's called the close. It's like a page and a half, which we'll look at in a second. So first things first, go to page one. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. So you'll notice there's a couple of places here. We talk about like cuckle rocks. We talk about the quality of it. So right off the bat, we're pretty much framing it in for them, right? The first place, though, I really had you write down. Do you guys remember on page two? I had you write down cuckle costs more, but but you'll see why it's worth it. So that's what's called building value. Now you're starting to understand the importance of this right here, guys. Okay, so cuckoo costs more, but you'll see why it's worth it. Okay, look at where it says made in America. It's the top American made brand. It's the third or fourth paragraph down on page two. Underline that and put value next to it or put a little V next to it. So you understand it's a block of V, block of value. Promoting that we're made in America, that builds value. That gives, that makes sure they understand, okay, why, bless you. Sure. Uh, why we cost more. That way they can understand. That's one of the reasons why it's good. Why, why, why it's good. One of the reasons why. <laughs> Wise guys. <laughs> All right, so then you again, you say, hey, do I have you right now? I'd rather explain to you why we cost more than to apologize for selling you junk. Yeah. Okay, that's value, right? You're explaining, hey, we're, we cost more, but I'd rather explain to you why than to sell you junk, right? Uh, go down to where it says, uh, somewhere in there is handcrafted, isn't it? Am I just making that up? Three bullets from the bottom in the company side. Okay, cool. Oh, perfect. I love it. So it's it's bold. It's right above the Feeding America that I make a wish where you wrote that in. Thanks, Peter. So handcraft in the United States, because if something's handcrafted, you know it costs more money. All right? AMG, if you're going to buy a Mercedes, that's a handcrafted engine. All right? So it costs a lot more money than other Mercedes models. All right? Because it's handcrafted. You buy handcrafted clothing, it's going to cost you more than something done by a machine. All right? You buy handcrafted anything. It's going to cost you more money. An artisan took the time to build it by hand, making sure it's all good to go. And it just also required more hours of attention to build it or create it. So, promote handcrafted. The fact that we've been on TV, doesn't that add value? I mean, Dr. Phil's not going to show junk. It's not like he's in the knife industry. Okay, he's not going to give away junk. So, that implies, uh, obviously, through association, through him giving it away, that obviously it's a high quality product. All right, so just cutting the penny does not immediately communicate value. You can even write that down by, hey, Judy, see how good those shears are? That's why we cost more. Write that line, though. It's a money line. Hey, Judy, see how good those shears are? That's why we cost more. Write that down. See how good those shears are? That's why we cost more. Okay, so see how good those shears are. You know, that's why we cost more. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. All right, go to the next page, page three. Obviously, the bottom part especially, make sure they know that cut goes more valuable because they don't have to waste all their money buying it again and again and again. So that's exactly why you're communicating that junky knives cost a lot of money throughout time. Just make sure you get that point across to them. Page four, this is really the... There's a lot of these, all right? Value, 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 value. Okay, each part of the knife, in fact, you should be presenting as, hey, that costs more, but it's worth it because. That costs more, but it's worth it because. So, and it's just friendly review for you. You should never have a customer 
um, having their expected price be less than actual. They may say, hey, I'm, I'm going to choose not to afford all of Cutco right now, but they should never say it's too expensive. If I say something's too expensive, that tells you that they expected it to be less than what they heard. Okay? Can't afford it is different than too expensive. All right, if somebody says they can't afford it, that's, they really can, but that's the excuse they're going with. All right, and evidence of that, if their cell phone were to break, would they buy a new cell phone? Yeah, so people you know can at least afford an average order of Gutco. Now, the question is, should they choose to afford it or not? It's not whether they can or not, it's whether they're going to want to choose to. Don't get me wrong, if both people are unemployed and they're struggling a bit right now, you would not show them Cutco now. You guys get it? That, would, that wouldn't be a target customer at this point of their life. You'd wait for them to get established. But anybody you are going to sit down with, they're working. They can buy stuff. So you have to give them reason to choose to. So anyway, I, I just want you to know there's a difference between somebody saying it's too expensive versus I can't afford it. Two different things. So you should never get too expensive because you're going to take responsibility for building value as you go through these different things. I used to stop midway through this section and be like, hey, Judy, you see a pattern there? We put a ton of money into Cutco. We needed to make it this last forever for you, especially because of the guarantee, which I can't wait to tell you about. So it just kind of like ties it all together and really emphasizes that, hey, here's why we cost more. Right? The hands-on experience cutting the rope. Hey, how'd that feel, Judy? Isn't that great? Well, 10 plus years from now, it's still going to cut that way. All right? That's why, again, you're going to have to pay more money on it because the edge will keep it safer and, and just works better. So I'll use those you know, lines. Top of the guarantee page, what did I have you write down? Uh, because of this guarantee. And that's really, that's why. Do you guys get that? Once we decide to have a forever guarantee, didn't that change the materials we chose to use? We had to plan it to then last forever. Other companies, Vuskoff said, hey, let's make this last 10 years. And that determined the materials they use, which is why they use different materials than we use. Make sense? So we planned, instead of planned ours to go obsolete, we planned ours to last forever, and then we picked the materials to use, and the way we manufacture it, and all of, all of that. So tell them that. That's important. Even if they just bought new knives, don't get intimidated by that, because inevitably those knives will what? Yeah, and now Cutco, it's a, really, they buy the whole set, it's a one-time purchase. It never gets used up. So one thing I used to say to my customers, I'd be, Judy, even people who just bought other knives recently, they still get Cutco because it never gets used up. So why put off something that you're going to use forever anyway? That's a money line. I like it. I know it works. All right, you go, why, why put off getting something that's going to last forever anyway? There's no need to wait. So it's a good way to, in advance, deal with the concern, hey, wait, I just bought newer knives. You want to start, this is more of an advanced thing, but you want to get in the habit of like thinking, well, what could hold the customer back? And then you should deal with it when? Now, now in the demo versus waiting the, at the end for them to say something to you. Okay? So if you're sitting out at the housewife by yourself, first weekend you shouldn't, but if you do, once after the first weekend, then you should deal with the concern of, I need to speak to my husband first. But you should deal with it in advance okay, before you get to the end of the demonstration. Um, this is all build value, build value, awesome. Okay, them cutting real food on the demo, make sure that they're, you know, I mean, fun with it. they cut the leather. Like, wow, that's so cool. All right, and you paint the picture of them using Gucko forever and having super fun doing it. Okay, so now I go to page eight. It's not numbered, so number of page eight. Now that I stapled the new sheets, I never had page numbers, I don't to do that. Okay, so uh, number of page eight, eight, number of page nine, nine. That way we, if we jump around, you know where to go. All right, so let's have somebody read the summary. Let's begin on my right, Allie. So after you number the page, read the summary up the top. Let me review why so many people choose to Sure. You'll always have a sharp knife. It's comfortable, safe, and sanitary. And you'll, you'll enjoy cooking more. Cook will last forever, so when you go last at a knife, you'll ever buy it. And you won't waste another dollar on stolen dangerous knives or go. Okay, Peter, next. Cook will also saves a lot of money and pays for itself. Most customers would agree that if they owned a set of Cutco, they would eat out at least one less time per month. If that saves $60 a month, if it's $720 saved this year, over 25 years, you'll save $18,000. And a neat way of illustrating it as well, like the fact that it's more valuable to have Cutco because of the reason he just read. So this is just more value building stuff, all right? Now, see where it says the close? Okay, write down memorize by your 10th demonstration. So you have to have this word for word by your 10th demonstration. And it's word for word. And it's funny because 10 minutes from now, people go, word for word? I go, yeah. 
I just said that. So to the point where you'd have to, you could be able to take a piece of paper and handwrite it and match it up and it matches up, guys. But don't make up your mind that it's hard to memorize. Well, we'll go through with the end of it in a second. It's a page and a half. Just like, wait a second. All right, so the close is this first page here, and then you'll see when we turn the page where it cuts off. It's about a page and a half is what it is. And now pay attention to the decision you're making up about the assignment I'm giving you. The assignment is the assignment. It is what it is. Some of you are making me, oh my god, I think that's hard. You guys get that? Or some of you guys didn't think anything. You're like, okay. <laughs> All right, yeah, we're talking about the same thing. Now, if your favorite song came on Pandora, would you know the words to it? Yeah, so what that means is your brains are capable of retaining information. Everybody got that? So please don't be like, oh, I've decided I can't remember stuff. I'm like, well, tell me your name. And you tell me your name. Okay, well, your brain recalls your name. So your brain has the capability of remembering words. Just uh, make, you know, this could be your very long name. <laughs> a page and a half long name for you. You guys get my point, however? Now, I want to be serious with you a little bit. Well, I'm always serious, but you get my point. I want to make sure you get this concept. If you don't memorize this, don't expect to succeed. If you choose not to succeed, then own your lack of success instead of blaming Cutco and saying Cutco's a scam and doesn't work. Okay? All right, that's one of the things that bothers me a bit. Why I let it bother me. I choose to let it bother me. Our programs work. Product's phenomenal. The psychology of them is great. Customers have used it forever. It's on TV. The product's great. But if you don't follow the program and you end up sucking at the job, please don't blame the job for that. Just get it? So what that means is follow the program and do well. I'd rather that be the case, obviously. I don't care how, like, I don't care whether you do this temp or permanent or, like, limited time, part-time, blah, blah, blah. You guys know it's the same training, whether you're a person part-time or full-time. It's always the same. Whether you play soccer one day a week or seven days a week, I still would put you through the same training. You still have to learn how to dribble and kick the ball and stuff like that. I just want to make sure I, I really frame this in properly so you take ownership and responsibility and don't be in denial you know, about whether or not you prepare for something. Okay, so if you get a C on a test, but you had other kids in the class got an A, instead of blaming the teacher, like I said earlier, please take responsibility and take a look at what you could have done differently. Okay, so this shouldn't take you too long to learn, but do commit the memory to it. All right? Make sure you're ready, to, you're powerfully set up. The second you know you have it memorized, won't you give yourself permission to be confident? Okay, because you'll expect success. All right, so and a lot of this is based on psychology and the things I've taught you. And also, the words just work. If they didn't work, I wouldn't have typed this up. Guys, uh, uh, this, these words have created $15 million in Cutco sales in a whole bunch of different markets. Lower income, higher income, different you know ethnicities, different cooking styles. All right, why? Well, because I've done this for years. You guys know that, right, in all different territories? Okay, so this works if you work it and follow it and use it and all of that. Okay, so with that said, let's start reading. So Alex, why don't you read the uh, opening paragraph of the close, and we'll go around the room and start to commit this to memory now as you guys are reading along. Uh, most people are unaware of what quality coding costs. I'm sure you agree that we couldn't compare a cut code to a cheap set of knives sold at a grocery store. We also wouldn't compare it to a luxury set with sterling silver handles from Tiffany's that costs... Put down like seven to $10,000 plus, seven to $10,000 plus. You want to let them know that luxury exists, okay? So that way, already, they'll start to appreciate the price of your truck. Obviously, we don't cost seven to $10,000. So. Keep going. Let's we'll see one more paragraph. And we'll switch. Right, um, present price comparison sheet. So I'm going to give you what you'll present to them. And from now on, what I give you, you're going to keep it stored in the back of your blue binders. All right, so it's a comparison. It shows uh, Mustaf on it. And it often still shows Shunt. Let's get some of these going around. i got to grab more from the drawer. So it has Vistoff and it has Shun knives on it. There you go. Let's get some of those going around. Is actually in the holes or the No, no. I, I remember I said back pocket. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah, okay, great. I'm joking. Saying, my point is the same. So it's like <laughs> you got the special one. <laughs> Does everybody have one at this point? In the back. Does everybody have? You're up. Does everybody have one? Yeah. So this is what you pull out of this section. So you should have this out. And what's neat about it? What helps? Like you don't need to memorize stuff that's listed on there. So you see the pricing on there. You don't have to worry about memorizing that. You see how it has handle and edge and guarantee as well. 
So if you're going to memorize the close, but if it's going to be listed on this piece of paper and you're going to be pulling this out anyway, so you know, don't bother memorizing what's on this piece of paper. It will tip for you there, okay? All right, Ale, why don't you read? Uh, next, let's keep switching. Uh, Wistoff is good, cut code great, but they're still good. They have full tang with high carbon stainless steel bleed, very sharp out of package, top selling brand in stores. As you can see, the manufacturer suggested retail price of Wistoff's three success is. You see right there, it's the suggested price is 3325 It's on the left hand side of that sheet there, guys. 3300 You have to write this in your manual, though. This was 3325 right there. Okay, so in the manual, right down, 3325 is their suggested retail price. And keep going, you're going to give the sale price, though. Uh, you can find, find it on sale for... Put down 19.99 or less. You don't need to put the pennies. It just adds extra math or whatever. So 19.99 or less. You Make sure you say or less because they may have gotten a really good sale price somewhere. Excuse me? By the way, you guys know retail stores... Uh, the sale items, you guys realize they usually lose money on the particular item, but it drives up traffic to the store. So like if you buy one sale item, you probably would buy like two other full price items. That's why the sales racks are usually where most of them are in the back. Well, they have a little bit in the front to entice you to come in the store, but the main sale section is where? In the back, right? So you have to walk through all the full price items to get there. In grocery stores, where do they put the meat and the dairy? Yeah, but farther back, right? So opposite corners and in the back. So that way you uh, have to go through the most aisles in order to buy the things that you'd go often to the store. All right, so which makes sense, good for business, then you buy like $80 Pop-Tarts, right, on your way back from grabbing the milk. All right, so um, anywho, just thought you'd be interested in learning that concept. All right, so let's keep going. Uh, there are, however, some differences between Wistop and Cup Cup. Okay, so next, you're up west. Compare features. Handle, Wistoff does not have a conclusive personal wedge lock handle. Edge, their straight edges must constantly be constantly sharpened on like Cutco's double the edge. In training, we rubbed Wistoff on a plate and it went dull immediately. Guaranteed. The guaranteed covers defects only while Cutco has the forever guarantee. Okay, next. Multiple on Cutco will type that it's 10 times better than any magic ever used. I know you haven't had a chance to use it that much yet, but considering the guarantee and unique features, most people would agree that Cutco's are at least twice as good as Wistoff. Next. When a product offers twice the quality and value and lasts twice as long, it should cost twice as much. At twice the price, you're talking over. Uh, over 4000 For your basic set of Cutco. Now, let me show you what you get for that. And normally, training, I would just not say anything and I want you to believe that it actually costs that much. Uh, I don't mind saying that it doesn't, but you have to make sure that, that that's the goal, right? What, of what? But yeah, that's the mission. Okay, so them to expect 4000 and the cup is going to cost less than that, obviously, now that I'm telling you. But when you, you want them, you want to, okay, so page one through page seven is designed to build value to the point of that's their expected price. Okay, when you first talk to some people, in their mind, they think knives cost like a hundred bucks. Obviously, we cost way more than that number. Okay, but that's their. A lot of people, if they don't know about the stuff, they don't know about Sean, they don't know about those things. So you'd have to then page one through seven, increase expected price to a higher level. Now, right here is where they're going to digest that number. You want to kind of chill with it a bit, which is why after you say twice the price, you're talking over four thousand. Let me show you what you get for that. So as you're going through what they get for that, they're, di they're digesting what number? 4,000. 4, 4, so you take your time with it. Okay, now, and, and you're going to see now, we're going to show them what the complete set is. We're going to show them what the family set is. You're going to review what the basic set is, and then you're going to give the basic set price. So you guys are like, really? Because you'd think, well, what about the complete set? Well, that's why before you leave training, I'm going to give you the prices of the bigger sets. But to be quite frank with you, some of you guys are going to be still insecure about the complete set price. Some of you guys are going to be like, oh yeah, no big deal, whatever. Like, you'll be neutral, like Switzerland. <laughs> you know, you'll be like, whatever, I don't have an opinion, really. I'll just say what it is. 
So if to you know if you you got to be able to give yourself a checkup from the neck up and know what your own expectation and confidence level. Uh, ideally, the way it should be done is you would give them the price of the complete set and the family set because then make the base set seem smaller. But if you're honest with yourself and you feel that it's secure, so be it. Then begin with the basic set price. Okay. So we're gonna we're just gonna go through it, get it memorized, but just know that you know you'll have the uh, I guess the higher prices as well by tomorrow. All right. For now, though, let's go through what's here. Now, in your blue binder, um, this part of the whole process, you'd flip to right after where the kitchen tool sets were. So it's after the pairing knife and all the individual knives. Okay, there, bingo. So that it's, it's, it will go one more page. Uh, the other way. Okay, now let me hold it up to show them. So when you're showing them the complete set, I usually turn to the ultimate picture, which is this right here. Okay, so everybody have one of these? Now some of you guys, I think, have photo, uh, photocopy just before that. Now some of you guys have photocopy sheets. We'll get new ones to you by tomorrow, okay? So just remind me, Steve, because I just saw you had some photocopies in there. Like towards the back end of it, you know. The front part, we want those photocopied. Like, see the steak knives photocopied? We can get you those so it's tomorrow before you do your real demo. All right, so see how it's ultimate set? This is what you turn to, and then uh, I think, well, Leon, why don't you keep reading? Mm. Treasure set. These are the three most popular sets. The first set is the complete, ultimate set. It has almost all the knives we make. It's the best value for a knife. 12 table knives, the kitchen tool set, and super shears, and the brass plate with your name already engraved on it. It's like a family heirloom, which is cool. I'll keep going. I don't have words anymore. <laughs> that you will pass down to the next generation. This set is great to have because if you ever change the type of cooking you do in the future, you'll be prepared for any cooking situation. Okay, so next, Julia. And so if you turn the white page that's in your manual, in your binder rather, on the back side of it is called the what? Now just so you know, these sets that we're talking about now, we charge them for additional items. Remember the basic set is not just the homemaker plus eight, it's actually the kitchen tools and the shears. The family set, you're going to charge them for the signature set. It's right there. You're going to charge them for the signature set. And in addition to that, you're also going to charge them for the kitchen tool set as well. So it's like both items, that's what we do in this office as a package deal. It'll make more sense when you get a price list tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll do order writing again. Okay. Just for now, get the idea that a lot of things we promote are actually packages. And then you can pull items out to make them a bit more affordable. Okay, so why don't you read the family set? The next set is the family set. This, is, this one is designed to have the fewest amount of pieces to cover all the practical tasks in the kitchen. It also comes with 10 table knives, kitchen tool set, and stuff and shit. Okay, awesome. And then uh, the next is the basic set. Now, in a bit, you'll see in parentheses, it says renames of basic tools. You would flip back. Um, actually, you know what? You could just open up the trifold one. See how they, uh, that, the next thing is like a major yellow trifold jobby? If you just open it once, that's the homemaker set. If you open it twice, that's the what? Exactly. If you open it three times, that's the ultimate. Now, we call it complete. Yeah, you can cool. You guys have to dig. So if you just open it once, in a second, you're just going to reread the names of the knives. So, Mike, you're going to do this. Because they're still digesting what price? 4K, right? So take your time going through what they get. Now, earlier in the demo, you want them to perceive it as very puny and small. Now you actually do want them to perceive it as what? A lot of different stuff because it's like now that they are thinking 4K. So it's like a, it's like a switch of the tension. This is what you're looking to do here. All right, Mike, go ahead. Well, first, so read the last set is the... Oh, um, yep. the last set's basic set. Um. Now, okay, I, I forgot to edit this. It says for people like me who barely even cook. If you like to cook, just say people who barely even cook. Leave off the like me part, okay? okay. Um, for, uh, the last set is the basic homemaker set for people who barely even cook. Uh, it has the 10 most essential tools. Um, That's when you read the name. So, pairing yeah. knife... Aaron knife, trimmer, spatula, spreader, deep carver, turning fork, butcher knife, deep chef, slicer carver, carving fork, and the Cool. Alright, keep going. That I explained earlier, plus eight table knives. Um, it also comes with the kitchen tools and super shears. So that's what makes it a package deal in our office, okay? So the we'll homemaker plus eight is homemaker we'll plus eight, kitchen tools, shears, those three combined, we call the basic set. Alright? So next. Back to the back there, Martin. 
Uh, present price. Yeah. The great thing about the base set is that it's not over four thousand. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so this is where we drop the price down. Now we're gonna, you're gonna find we're gonna quote the monthly payments. If they ask you full price, you'll know what it is. You can tell them. That's fine. But if they don't ask, there's just no need to communicate that. Okay, you communicate what it costs on a monthly basis. That's why anytime you see a car advertised, they're gonna advertise to you the monthly payment. Okay, and that usually is what you use. That's how I determine what car I bought. I told the guy straight. I go listen. Keep it beneath five hundred dollars a month. So I pay like four ninety whatever, and I said, uh, and I want to feel like you're hooking me up with a good deal, but I know you have to make money too, <laughs> okay? And I did. That's it. I told you, I'm, salespeople are easy to sell, you know. But I told them straight up. Like, you know, let's let's not prolong this, okay? Here's what I want. Here's the model. Here's the car, but whatever. But here's the requirements for me to choose to be comfortable and confident. Keep it beneath five hundred a month, and uh, and make sure I, I I I'm left feeling like you gave me a good deal. <laughs> right, so he's like, all right. <laughs> he's like, be positive, he's the easiest guy in the world. All right, so keep going. Uh, although it would be if it was sold in stores. As a matter of fact, it's not even as much as the set here. And that's where you point back at the, you know, the list off ad. Mm -hmm. Which is? The uh, 19.99. Do you remember the sale price of the list off? So 19.99 is that second fill in the blank at the top there. The basic set with table knife is only two ninety six. Two ninety six a month for five months, which is like an extra weekly grossly bill per month. Okay, so now you guys, it's two ninety six per month. So that's our monthly payment plan, two ninety six, broken up so you know what that feels like for them. So this is a month for five months. On a weekly basis, that would be seventy five dollars per. Week, which feels like about ten dollars a day to a customer. Okay. Now we don't have a daily payment plan. We're not going to charge your credit card once a day for five months. Who's got it? It's charged once a month for five months, but this is what it feels like. So if I were to put aside ten dollars a day in a drawer, after five months, I'd pay off my basic set forever. Remember to get it. Okay. In a bit, I'll give you the full price. Uh, the two ninety six a month includes tax already built into it. Okay. So that's everything, guys. Okay. Spread out over time. Uh, now, you immediately would say, like an extra weekly grocery bill, because it alters the perception of the number. The number is the number, opinion is opinion. You want to influence opinion before opinion is formulated. That's what persuasion is. Influence a decision before the customer makes a decision. Okay, that's just what, in general, that's how you persuade people. Ultimately, who the, who's the one that makes a decision? They do. Well, you want to influence that choice before the choice is made. You want to influence the decision. You want to influence the perception before it gets created in their mind. So that's why you'd be very clear about the whole extra weekly grocery bill. But that's a cool closing technique as well. I used to sometimes illustrate that on paper for a customer. Even if the average weekly household grocery bill is 200 bucks a week, which I, the average household now is a lot more than $200 a week in groceries. I mean, we used to pay over 300 and something years ago. Not when the youngest of four kids. We used to eat like crazy. Right. But even if it was two hundred dollars a week, multiply that by fifty weeks. Keep the math simple. Obviously, somebody's gonna, they're not going to like not eat food for two weeks, but we're keeping the math simple. Do you guys realize that's ten thousand dollars a year on groceries? See, I, I don't know if a lot of you guys have ever gone through this and looked at it in this way. Over the next thirty years, and, and this is not even assuming inflation, right? Or if you already do pay more as a household, which you, you probably you probably do, by the way. You may may or may not know that, but you do. Uh, do the math. That's $300,000, all right, on groceries. It usually ends up being probably more like a half a million dollars the average household will spend with inflation and all that stuff. Isn't that powerful illustration? So people should probably have good tools to prepare 300 to half a million dollars worth of food. All right, so, and this also makes everything else seem smaller. I used to do this with a customer. You could do this on paper for them. Uh, before you go, would you like to give it a try? It's called the uh, grocery bill or whatever the heck you want to call it, all right? That should be eye-opening for some of you. So, and, and also, that's why if you ever want to, like, stop smoking, if you're not going to do it because of health, look at how much you spend. A lot of times you don't sum it up. Like, I should stop going to Starbucks as much as I do. I should bring my own food. Like, if you do the math, it's like, I've been paying, like, 13 bucks a day, like, six days a week. What was that, like, uh, $78 a week? Yeah, so, basically, every, every five months, I'm paying about uh, 1200 bucks. So every year I probably pay between two to three grand at Starbucks. Yeah, I probably should make some of my own food though. 
<laughs> That's why my accountant years ago when I used to live in the city, he's like, Joe, have you done the math on what you're paying for cabs? Especially since you live like one block from the train station and it lets you out one block from your office. So we did the math. I'm like, all right, I'll get MetroCard. <laughs> I'll go take the subway. It wasn't like, because it, 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 just, it just didn't make sense. And especially with traffic, it probably takes longer than the train. You know, when all of a sudden done. But it, it was like four to five grand I was paying a year on cabs. It's one thing if it's like 3 a.m. and you're coming back for, you know, that's one thing. But like <laughs> 8 a.m. in the morning going to work, it's like just freaking buying a limited metro car job. So it's just a way of looking at things, okay? Uh, how uh, money adds up over time. Let's keep going. Keep, uh, keep reading. Who's next? Charles Clothes. These are our most popular sets. We have found that one of these sets appeals to just about everybody. If you were consider considering a set of cuckoo, would you prefer the basic set and classic or pearl, pearl color? I like the pearl. Now, once you guys become comfortable with introducing the complete set, which is more, and then also the, obviously, the signature set, which is between the two, and instead of saying which color do you like best, you're going to say which of the three sets you like best. Yeah, exactly. Some of you guys are going to want to modify that tomorrow, like when you leave, when you have the other prices. So it allows for, again, the basic, the shop as basic, hence the title we give, we've given it. All right, and the complete sets complete, and you go from there. Complete price, I promote as an extra car payment a month. Now, giving them something to compare it to, it's, it's in the $400 range. It's like $480-ish, something like that. Again, don't sugarcoat. Now, as much as possible, in a bit, we're going to go through your own perspective again. You want to leave your own opinions out of the equation. Price is price. Your opinion, if you're insecure about the price, that will affect your body language as you communicate to a customer. All right, that's why I'm letting you guys sit with 296 a bit here. To me, that's like nothing because I pay all my own bills. You guys get it? So an extra 296 a month to me is like, I mean, shoot, I have a storage unit I pay 200 bucks a month for. My sister paid my sister at one time. Her and her husband they paid more on daycare than they did on their mortgage. So you think about people with daycare and car payments and mortgage and utility <coughs> payments and so you go through all of the average expenses of a household an extra two ninety six a month is not like well but but when I was a college kid I was a broke college kid so my perception of money was different like if I had twelve hundred bucks and I was a college kid I would roll around in naked I'd be like I'm rich all right but when you get to the real world you get the twelve hundred doesn't really get you very far okay when you're covering your own expenses for everything some of you guys can relate to this if you're a bit older and you're you already are pretty much on your own. Okay, but when I was a new cuckoo rep, I had to literally, I, I had to think like the customer, not like a 20-year-old broke college kid. See the difference? Okay, so remember, if I look up a lot in the dictionary, would there be a number by it? No, because it's it's, uh, it's an opinion. Okay, so um, so the point is that you want to not let your own, if you're a broke college kid like I was, all right, you want to make sure that you're not you know, transferring your insecurity to a customer. You want to look at the product through the eyes of a 40-year-old. How's that sound? All right, somebody working full-time who already has bills and, and stuff like that versus looking at it through the eyes of an 18-year-old, which we'll cover a little more depth shortly. Uh, let's keep going. So we're up to you, Sam. First call special. Go for it. Now let me explain our first call special. The first call special allows them to give you free merchandise when you place an order on my first page. If you get this stuff today, I can actually give you your choice of any two gadgets for free. Okay. So now, show gadget your inside front cover of your blue binder. There was a gadget booklet. Well, it's called the user guide, right there. Can you hold that up, Steve, so everybody can see that? Okay, guys, you should have, each have one of these. All right, so if you didn't, it may have fallen on the ground. Now, here's what I like to do. This comes with every set. It's like buying a TV and getting a user manual with the TV. Because with the forever guarantee, they're going to use stuff a long time. It has all cool pictures and what the knives are used for. Here's why I'm giving this to you. Because you don't have all the knives in your sample kit, right? So I want you to remind the customer, hey, you know, Judy, I'm going to review all the uses of the tools, but just so you know, your set's going to come with this. See how you assume to sell your set? And now if you ever forget anything I'm covering with you, no big deal. You can easily just look at this. This will give you some pointers. Uh, I also am going to have you use this to show them some of the gadgets. Because I don't want you to actually do this. Let me get your binder real quick, Steve. Okay, cool, thanks. All right, so you see here, we used to have you guys flip to the back here, but if you too prematurely flip back here and show them all this stuff, I don't want them to see these. If I had my way, we wouldn't even have these. It's okay, we do, because they are housewarming gifts and blah, 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 blah. But if we didn't have these, you as a rep would have to stay within the, the sets, all right? 
All right, we don't just make these three. You'll see in a bit in the back pocket, there's a galley set, an essentials plus five, a studio plus four. Okay, the prepackaged sets, I'm not talking about these. They range anywhere from like $300-ish paid in full to uh, complete that's over two grand. Okay, so we do drop down as low as like 300 something, like three, whatever, and it's like 70 bucks a month. It's really no big deal on a payment plan, you know? So if I had my way, we wouldn't even have these, but we do. So I don't want you showing these to the customer too soon. Do you guys say why? Then they'll be like, oh, that's cutesy, why don't you do that? Okay, but then they're gonna be misusing these tools. If I only have these two knives in my kitchen, I'm gonna try to do all my food prep with just these two knives. That just doesn't work. All right, that's when you misuse the tool instead of using the right tool to do the right job. Anyway, in your little booklet, Javi, some of them have been ear, uh, rabbit ear, which is what I want you to do, actually. Go to page, I think it's like 24, 25. Find where it has the ice cream scoop and stuff. What page is that? 25, 24, 25. So a rabbit ear, one of them. You know, like meaning fall down one of the corners, so you quickly turn to it. I know it goes against everything you're doing. <laughs> My teacher told me never to do that. I uh, just want to let you guys know um, another rep called in for sales. Uh, yeah, it's asking for the sold book. I don't understand. Thank you. Uh, approximate CPO? That's usually what uh, it was. <laughs> I was one of the gift sets. Okay, got it. So a gift set, like a hundred something bucks, and then who? Yeah, it was a previous Cucko owner as well. Who was the rep, though? So we could... Matt. Matt, okay, got it. Matt Castleton. You didn't yeah. say Matt, no, you just said oh, a rep. Okay. <laughs> Mysteriously. All right, so, okay, thanks. Okay, so Matt, Matt's approaching his first promo. We have over half the group now, last week's group. We like to get the whole group as soon as possible. We like to challenge you guys to get there first weekend, but usually we uh, target by Wednesday for you guys, meaning the whole group. But we want to average, remember, 1000 bucks. So that means for every person who does $500 this first weekend, somebody else would have to do 1500 okay, for us to hit our average. Obviously, Steven raised the average a bit. His first weekend, he did like four grand, remember? And that's usually the way it works. There's some people who take raise the bar a bit, some people write at the hours, some people are a little below the average number. And that's how it works out to be an average by definition. So you see these booklets? Cool. So show them this because that way you wouldn't by accidentally show them the smaller what? Sorry, Gift sorry. sets, okay? Cool. Um, and then don't worry about how free stuff works. Every week some people try like they like they want tomorrow I will teach you the ins and outs of free stuff. For now, even when you role play, just say I'll give you the blank for free. Be like, oh, I like the blank. But tomorrow, obviously, you'll know. And then, just, so let's table the specifics of free stuff. So let yourself be okay with not knowing the particulars of free stuff until tomorrow. But when you role play, say the blanks, you at least know you will be offering something free to create urgency for buying today versus later. Good. So let's keep going. Um, you were up to, or you were about to read the, read the italics. All right, Sam. Yeah, it's a uh, show gadgets and user guide. You were about to read from the show gadgets and user guide. Okay, show gadgets and user guide. Ask for the order, Mrs. Blank. I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't ask you this question. Would you like to get this set of cuckoo today and receive the you say blank. blank and the blank for free? Oh, yes, I love the blank and blank. Okay, so now it's yes, it's congratulations, and obviously you would do referrals. But we're, on, we're going to go through a little bit of a drop down technique. So step one, you guys show them the complete set, like you're reviewing what it is. Uh, you review what the family set is, if you recall. You also review the basic set, and you begin with the basic set price, which you now know is you know, it's 296 a month. Okay, now if the basic set is out of their price range, let's go ahead and follow the whole drop-down process. It's like a staircase. Do not take the elevator. So if this is a little too much for them, don't be like, well, you want to buy a knife? Okay, that's definitely not what you want to do. Okay, you take it one step at a time. Now. What I'm about to go through with you, you would only do if they don't want the what? Yeah. The basic set. On the other side, yeah. Okay, so if they're buying the basic set, don't be like, oh, no way, buy smaller. Like, what? No, all right? So whatever they like, they like, that's good to go. But now we're going to teach you how to drop down successfully. Obviously, the office average order is what? 300, so you will need to learn how to drop down. But we have some reps that get really confident and comfortable, and they properly promote these three sets. So that's why they have an average order of like a grand. Now you start to understand how average orders come about. But as a whole, as an organization, you know, we do have to drop down several steps. So, first drop down step. Mel. Uh, I have you step on my toe. Or cut my car. Um, <laughs> okay. If I'm sure, drop down to just homemaker plus eight. Go for it. Mrs. Jones, can you do it without the kitchen tools and the shears? Oh, uh, yes, and it means I'll save money, yes. In that case, just get the knives. Okay. That will save you about... $300. So save the $300. Yes, I'll play. 
So it'll be just uh, two thirty-three a month. Okay, so the basic set you would then drop down, which you can put home e plus eight. You'll know what that means, all right? Home e plus eight. Yeah. So home e plus eight, and that's two thirty-three per month. Okay, so it went from two ninety-six down to two thirty-three per month. And why was it three dollars less in full? Because that's what the kitchen tools and the shears cost. Okay, you're pulling that out of the equation. Uh, well, it goes from two ninety six well, no, uh, for five payments. Five. It's about sixty dollars difference. Five times sixty it is three hundred. Which is why you just didn't save three hundred dollars. It's all good, no problem. Um, so next thing, okay, so that's the Omega plus eight. You drop down to there. Now you see why in our office we have a bit of a higher average order because we begin with the basic set, whereas other offices they begin with just the Omega plus eight. And then you have to drop down from there to like the little smaller, yeah. We want to put off as long as possible pulling out the drop down catalog, which you'll see in a bit is in the back pocket of the binder. Don't go there now. But that's where the galley plus six is, the essentials plus five, so you put all those, nine, those sets. Put that off as long as possible until you find out, you know, what's going on with these sets here. And then if need be, then you would drop down from there to smaller sets, okay? If, and eventually, you, you'll even sell somebody one item, which is fine. That's the whole reserve first call special thing. So you'll learn how to do that. All right, let's go through the next drop down. All right, so back up here in the front alley. So if still unsure, let's assume they're still a little unsure about that. They're like, ah, it seems a little too much. I want to spend less. What's next? If still unsure, drop down to treat and special. No problem. Thanks so much for helping me out today. Can I ask you a few questions to see how I did on my presentation? Yeah, sure. Did you like Pepco? Oh, what yes. Did you like it's great. It's uh, very sharp and good quality. <laughs> if this set was free, would you use it often? Yes, I cook often, yes. Is money the main thing holding you back from uh, getting it today? I'd say yes. Is the free stuff really a big deal to you right now, or would you prefer it to uh, I'd pro probably prefer to save some money. Got it. Well, do you have five old knives you don't like? It? Oh, yes. If you trade in those five old knives, <laughs> I can take them. Uh, $182 off. $182 off. Guys, this is why I have all these crappy knives under here. All right, customers trade in old beat-up knives. Now, don't get confused by this. Please don't randomly just discount price. The way you're able to give them a discount is because you're giving them some of the table knives for free instead of charging them for all of them. Okay, so the way it's a discount price, yeah, this is what's called a homemaker plus what? Eight. You're going to charge them for a homemaker plus, I think it's plus one actually, and then give them seven for free. We may end up modifying it a bit because you have to do, you do minus, just, you know what, let's leave it as is and then in the future I'll teach you how you can modify it a bit if you want a higher order, you know. But for now, this is what it's scripted for. Uh, you're charging them for a homemaker plus one table knife and then you're giving them for free uh, seven. Okay, so that's how it ends up being uh, discount. It's kind of like buying a car with no engine and then they give you the engine for free so you end up having a working car but it costs you less money because you don't have to buy all of the car. Why we do that? Well, it just gets them excited about not wasting their money in the past. So some people will get a bit hung up about that. Okay. Now, if you're going to do the trade in special, don't give them other gadgets for free because you're already giving them how many table knives for free? Seven. Seven. You clear on that? Now, you don't have to review with them that you're giving them free table knives. It just confuses matters. I'm letting you know how we're able to do it. The point is we're not just randomly mining you off dollars. Okay, the wide costs less money because we're just having to buy less of the set and giving the rest of the set for free. You can do that with any set with table knives. Okay, so like even the ultimate set, you can have them buy the ultimate plus two table knives and then give them ten table knives for free. Even the galley set. Remember the melted finger knife I showed you from the gate logs? They bought a galley. So you can charge them for a galley plus one and then give them five table knives for free because it's a galley plus six all together. And some people will give you an entire set like this. There's other things under you, okay? All right, it's kind of like uh, car dealerships. You trade in a used car or an old car. Some of those, they don't even do it. They just trash them. But they do that as a way to get you uh, excited about not losing or wasting money in the past. So why does them giving us knives let us, like, let the company have money to charge them less? Because you're giving table lines for free. No, like, how are they able to do that? You would do that as the rep. I'll teach you tomorrow. Oh, okay. it's, it's an order form thing, yeah. The, the free knives, or the junky, crappy knives, we just put under here. Then there is nothing to do with it. So you can tell them to give you a piece of paper if you want to. Give me your shoe and I'll take three. 
You do it as a way to, so that they don't they feel good about not wasting their money. The company it has nothing to do with it. We just invented it. You know, in, in the field. So it's the same reason why it'll make. So I, I'm not sure if I really did I answer your question. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. You're hung up about the fact that it's old crappy knives, and it, as if we send them into the company, we don't. The fact is, even if they didn't give you anything, you could still use up bonus points, charge them for homemaker plus one, give seven day lines free. Okay. But tomorrow you'll learn about free stuff. You don't know about free stuff yet, so that's why it's a sort of. But tomorrow it'll be clear. Okay. So for now, it's like just trading old knives to me, Sally or Aunt Sally, and I'll get up with a better deal. I'm letting you know the way we are giving them the better deal is you're just not charging them for all the table knives. Okay. So you're technically charging them for a homemaker plus one. You're giving for free seven table knives, all right? But that requires tomorrow you learning how to do that, all right? Which is the whole free item thing. Well, you just got done learning the first call special, right? Hey, buy today, I'll give you an ice cream scoop free. Yeah, so it's kind of like the same. So instead of saying buy today, I'll give you an ice cream scoop to free, it's like, hey, buy now and trade in. I'm giving you seven table knives out of the eight for free. Although you don't need to say that because it's just it's more information. It could confuse them. But I'm letting you know how it works, and tomorrow you'll know how to actually write a order. Right. So, all it is is trading in old stuff. You're giving them uh, a cheaper price because you're not having them buy all the items that come in Homemaker Plus 8. That's all. Going back to the end, we'll, we'll keep going, but it's the, again, buy a car with no engine. Here's an engine for free. All right, so combined, you now have a whole car, but you only have to buy the car, the body, and the parts without the engine. Okay. Hey, I'm How's Steve. Guys, it's Steve. We've talked a lot about. So, what are you up to sales now, CPO? Five something. God, you must be at you, close be. to six. Are you sure? Yeah, I might be. Okay, you're not. You're not sure though. No. Okay, God. So find out in the back of your white binder. I would definitely know that. Yeah. Know. Steve's number one in the training group. Okay, but I definitely want him to know. You know what he's at, so that way he's eager to drive it to the next level. Yes. You, know, you want to know your statistics overall. Mm. So. Hey, okay. all right, so over, uh, he made $1,000 in commission already, isn't that cool? All right, so I just started, he hasn't even done this a week yet, so that's neat. Um, meaning being in the field. You he, yeah. you started doing Kaku Demos on Friday? Friday. Okay, yeah. okay, so today's your your first, yeah. uh, your one week anniversary, okay? It's not bad, so he's, uh, you know, about six grand or maybe higher, figure out what you're at. Okay, so you've won a bunch of prizes already, that's cool. And this Monday we have a division meeting, you're going to be acknowledged and honored on stage, okay? Now, there's some other people from other the other divisions that you can obviously keep chasing after. Yeah, what kind of stuff? Cool. All right, so let's give him our applause. We're doing a good job so far. All right. So, yeah, he started working with you. Where did you go to school again? Franklin Pierce University. You guys are right. And where did you go to high school? Uh, Woodland High School. Okay, cool. Do you know anybody in here? Oh, okay. That's what you said. Okay. <laughs> All right, great. So, yeah, and that's also good because you refer to friends, and, and I give him a bonus uh, for the work you put in. It doesn't come out of your pocket, I just dock my pay. So work hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so. Uh, it's, it's a thank you. It's like referring somebody to a gym. All right, thanks, Steve. What's that? Oh, yeah, good timing, the thumb. I did not predict that. That would be good. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, oh, man, the other day, the interview, it was just louder than ever. Like, they must have been, I, it was one after the next of the next, and I was sitting right here, so it's just like, uh, whatever. I just accepted it, but you couldn't even hear me. <laughs> I was like, are the plaques falling down? <laughs> There's a rattling. Uh, what's up? The pink copy box is right here, okay? So and then, yeah. Next time you can't find it, just accept that and drop it on the tabletop, you know? Okay. Too often we have to, like, I must finish the project. <laughs> Versus leaving it there until later. All right, so, okay, uh, finish off this paragraph. I have to give you the, did I tell you 182 off? Yeah. yeah. Okay, but I didn't give you the monthly payment. Yeah. It's 194 a month. So now you're beneath 200 bucks. So we're going to call that the trade in, is what we're going to call Trade in is 194 per month. Okay, so the basic sets 296. Homie plus 8, 233 a month. Trade special, 194. All right, in a bit, we're going to keep dropping down. You know, uh, we'll, let's uh, put the full prices down. Get your pen ready. Full price, the basic with the allowance is 1374 plus tax. So that's 1374 plus tax. So they ask you what the full price is, tell them, but say it's like a TV set. Got it? All right, so like a TV set. 
And then the Homemaker plus 8 is 1079. 1079. Uh, and then the trade in special is 897. 897. So well, those prices there don't include the tax. Once you add on the tax and divide by five, that's when you get these right here, the monthly payments. All right. Are you going to give us the uh, complete and tomorrow? And, uh, yeah. Good. All right, guys. So let's we're going to uh, do some price perspective stuff, and then we're going to give you a chance to role play this. That'd be a good time to use the bathroom as you're role playing, right? Eat food. Don't both eat simultaneously. Uh, we'll create a bit of a contest. Whoever can get this memorized first, I'll give you 20 bucks. All right, so people can get, you know, get that going right away. It gives you excitement. It's funny I say that, but again, immediately you guys are like, that's too hard, or that's easy. Or, that's, pay attention to that little, you know, little uh, voice in your head that tells you whether you're going to do well at something or not. You know, you want to kind of counteract that. All right, so price perspective. All right, uh, the average, uh, so you now know, guys, that the basic set costs 13 what in full? Okay, which is again two ninety six a month, seventy five dollars a week, ten dollars a day. Okay, so keep folks on that. But anyway, thirteen seventy four is what it is plus tax. That's what it is paid in full. Now, the average college kid in our country makes about three thousand dollars a year. So obviously, if I were to ask a college kid to buy a basic set, uh, they're like, a, "It's like, oh, you want to stab me in the gut, right?" Because it's like, "Hey, give me fifty percent of your annual income with one order." Now. The average household in our market, anybody remember from the interview? The average household makes how much in Westchester, Putnam, Rockland? Higher than that. $79,000 is the average household, okay? Our lowest town makes $59,000 for the year. Our highest towns, you'll see in a bit. I'm just going to give you what I got in one of the publications. Our towns, it's like a magazine, whatever, and it lists the Westchester County. I don't have Putnam, I don't have Rockland, but they're pretty comparable. Putnam's a little bit lower. I grew up in Mayapak. All right, it's a little bit lower, but it's still on the same price range, okay? You can pass, don't keep these, just pass some of these around. I only have a, you know, kind of scope them out, guys. So you're dealing with a very established market, all right, put it that way. And even our lowest income town is 49000 as I had said. Our highest income town, Scarsdale, is 237000 per household per year. Pound Ridge, 223000 Then you have, like, uh, Elmsford, seventy-six grand. Uh, Dobbs Ferry, 100 grand. Chappaqua, 106 per household. Bronxville, 178 uh, per household. White Plains, $73,000 per household. Yonkers, 55000 per household. Uh, New Rochelle, 70000 uh, North Salem, 138 grand. Mount Vernon, 49000 per household. Irvington, 150000 you, you live in a very wealthy, established area. And even our ordinary market, our ordinary neighborhoods, towns, still make more than the national form. Everybody got that? Okay, so wherever you sell cuckoo to, anywhere in Westchester County, any of these zip codes, I don't even care if it's the lowest one, you know, we can even use the, you know, um, well, on average, the, uh, what did I do the math out to be? It was like, you factor everything in, eliminate it, it doesn't matter. But here's the point. Even if you sit down with somebody who makes 60 k a year, let's use that as the number, $60,000. Obviously, a lot of neighborhoods are more than that, but we know that, right? So if you look at 60K for the year, and you want to talk about price perspective, 1300 bucks. if you do the percentage, it's about 2.2%. All right, so if I ask my Aunt Sally um, to buy a home, a basic set, I'm asking her for what percentage of her annual income? 2.2%. She still has about 98% roughly left over. So you see the different perspective there? So that's why you gotta stop thinking like a college student, and you have to start thinking like an established household, all right? Now, if somebody makes even more, like 100K for the year, it's even a lesser percentage. Then. Okay, if somebody makes 120 grand, it only feels like, you know, like 1% or something like that, okay, guys? So he makes 137,000, it's 1%. They make more than that, then it's even less. So he makes a little bit less, even if somebody were to make like 40 grand for the year, it's still only like 3 or 4%. You want to be crystal clear on this? So stop thinking like a student. Start thinking like a household. That's the way it you know, feels and works and operates. So and here's a good 2% of 3,000 is 60 bucks. So here's the logic, guys. If a student could spend 60, a household could spend 1,300 because it feels the same way. Who here knows students or who here yourselves, you spend 60 bucks on stuff all the time. Think about clothing. Most designer jeans cost well over a hundred bucks. I mean, shoot, we'll spend sixty bucks on some t-shirts for crying out loud, right? You know, uh, video games, going out to you know, uh, just you know, going out to a club and buying some Mountain Dew, right? You know, it costs a lot of money. Going to a Yankee game, 
Think about what you guys are going to blow on spring break. Okay, so here's the point. If a student can blow 60 bucks, a household could spend $1,300. This should help with your perception a little bit. That's why I'm doing this exercise for you. And I also want you to see really what your market is so you guys can kick butt, all right? I sold cuckoo all over the area, guys. So again, my grandparent or my grandma lives in the Bronx. Uh, I'm from Mayapak. My mom's from Yonkers. I sold cuckoo in Long Island. I sold cuckoo in Queens. That's where I used to live. Um, all over the place. You name it, I've sold cuckoo there. All right, so we live in a very, you know, again, established. Now, don't get me wrong, if somebody's unemployed currently, you wouldn't see them, but people can still afford stuff, all right? Um, let me get get, uh, you need to get this back for me after you're done looking at them. Oh, you did put it in there for me? Thanks. All right, that's great. All right, so here's the point. 90% of the population can afford taco, 10% cannot. You know, 10% is the unemployment rate, so you want to focus on people that are working consistently, and they can buy a taco, guys. All right, so uh, evidence of that, you start looking at different things. Like these are, I should probably get newer versions of these, but even PC Richards, like a lot of the TVs in here, guys, would you agree they're about a thousand bucks or more? All right, laptops, Apple. If you were to go to the Apple store, what's the average laptop? I'd say at least 15 hundo, you know, right? And then people are buying them constantly. You just watched. So if you ever need like to build your confidence that people can afford stuff, if you want to, just go sit at a store and watch people blow cash. And, credit card and whatever, you know, on different things, all right? Because otherwise it's just not rational to be like, well, people can't buy things, but you're watching them buy things. <laughs> so you want to go ahead and really look at what's happening, not our own insecurity sometimes. That's what exists. Uh, refrigerators, you guys know what refrigerators cost? About a grand. Okay. Now, fancy schmancy ones cost way more, but, you know, there's a Maytag refrigerator bought at Home Depot for a G. So you're going to find it's kind of hard for people not to spend $1,000 nowadays. $1,700 for a washing machine. So, you know, you can buy anywhere from, I don't know, a grand to fancy schmancy ones would cost more, obviously. Uh, here's a Kenmore refrigerator for 999 bucks. I mean, shoot, this is a, a dining room table from Walmart, and it's like 1000 bucks. You can buy fancy imported ones for like 5Gs or higher. But I want you to see that even at Walmart to buy a table is a G, right? Uh, Panasonic TV, <coughs> you know, whatever, we want to do these. Here's a used MacBook Pro, which we just said was about fifty to sixteen hundred dollars used. All right, Amazon. Uh, this is a Dell computer. They also give you an Xbox as a deal, I guess. And this is a little bit older, but nine hundred bucks. Maybe they're a little cheaper now. I don't know. But you get the point. Okay, somewhere in that range. Here's a fake leather couch. I know it's fake because this is faux leather. Faux is the French word for fake. All right, so they they try to make it snazzy sh sh though, so they use the word faux instead of fake leather. All right. Uh, but you know, a couch, a Kmart guys, cost eleven hundred bucks. It was real leather, it cost you what, like three to five grand? Something like that. It depends on the quality, you know, the leather. Pots and pans, I guess um, pots and pans that I ever set cost you over a grand. I guess I have no idea about that, right? But it's not like you pluck it from the tree. It's not like a piece of paper. You have to like, actually have to be manufactured. It takes a lot of steps to do that. All Clad's a pretty good company though. So that's uh, six hundred and eighty bucks for a ten piece set. So if you got a full set, it would cost you over a grand nowadays for pots and pans. Here's a wicker couch sold at uh, Kmart for $1,099. These aren't fancy items, okay, but yet yeah, that's what they cost. Here, I, I like to show you one luxury item. This is pretty cool. It's an $8,500 refrigerator. It must have a lot of like computer chips in it and technology in it. So this would be a luxury, remember the categories, of the refrigerator industry. All right, so stores don't usually stock too many of these, but they at least have a couple, right? That makes everything else seem more affordable. Okay, that's exactly why I remember the whole... Japanese knife thing, and you say, you know, Tiffany's costs anywhere from seven to $10,000 plus. Uh, National newsletter. These are all, what I'm doing right now for you guys, I'm just making sure you can leave training saying people can and will buy cuckoo in my area. Do you guys get that? Because if you make up your mind, remember decision, that people can't afford things, you're going to sabotage the demo so you get to be right about that opinion. Okay, so you guys got to make sure you look at the facts, not your own insecurity. Because we do prejudge people. Like my second cousins, Bill and Susan, thank goodness I changed my opinion about them, but in our family, we view them as cheap. But that's not who they are, right? Bill and Susan is who they are. My opinion is they're what? So I there, and then my second decision was they're probably not going to buy. So I had to catch myself. I go, whoa, because my manager even taught me a few of these type of concepts. And he's like, listen, pretend you don't know the people, but you know their demographic. Bill and Susan live in New Rochelle, guys. They're established, not baller status, okay? They're not rich by no means, but established, have kids like the cook. They ended up buying one of the sets that you'll see in a little bit. I think it was the kitchen editor all night. I had to go in, though, changing my mind about what was possible. So a lot of times you prejudge our neighborhoods, don't we? 
But if I took a rep from California, would they know anything about our neighborhood? No, they would just look at this and be like, wow, okay, these people are established. I get it. <laughs> and they'd go in with a different expectation. So that's why, this is exactly why I'm doing this. You can keep one of these. This is a national newsletter from last week, guys. Let's get these going around. Yeah. Uh, Joe. <laughs> 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 All right, so this is a national newsletter from last week. Two weeks ago, it was even higher. You'll see it spike up this week. But I want you to see that people are selling seven grand as an individual rep in like the middle of like Indiana. All right, so if they're getting it done there, you'll be okay. Let me get one of those. No. Thanks, Tim. All right, so the upper people are CSPs, Cutco Sales Professionals, so they get paid at least 50% commission. In order to be a CSP, you already have to be at like 100 or 200 in career sales. Guys, what's the highest sales level when you hit what career sales? Well, 30, good, Steve. There's $30,000 when you hit the FSM promotion. Right? So that's when you're making half 50%. Right? Uh, and you see these people up here like, Heather Drew made 7000 in commission last week as an individual rep. Isn't he? So other people are struggling, other companies, whatever, we're getting it done with Cupco, guys, for all the reasons and all the, the methods and everything you're learning yourself. Uh, Yaz from Paramus, New Jersey, that, I don't know if they're male or female, all right, but they, they're brand new rep, $7,600 in Cutco. Guys, you know what? Here's the, I actually have to use the bathroom, like pacing back and forth. Um, I'm going to need you guys to just dive in and role play, and we'll come back to this in a second. <laughs> this is, I had no filter on it, right? Versus me doing like a jig and like, oh, hey. Just start on this. Yeah, because you're going to need to role play, and I'll come back. So, what you're going to do, guys, you're going to sell each other a trade and special, okay? Sell each other a trade and special. You guys hear that? So what that means when you're role playing with your partner, everybody listen, guys, listen, 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 before I do more of the PP dance, okay? Uh, so, <laughs> wow, okay, great. Uh, I like that fun life, whatever. Uh, so, you're going to go ahead and go through with your partner, and then the first time you offer the basis, I'd be like, oh, it seems like a little too much money. Just say those exact words. Don't be like, no, you know, just say a little too much money, then go down to the homemaker by itself. Ah, it's a little too much. Get to the trade special and be like, all right, I'll take it. And then you get to switch, and then you go. You guys got it? Make sure you're using the little booklet thing, the Hankels or Vostov ad, and you also have to be reading the names of the knives. Remember it says in parentheses? Okay? So let's go ahead and try. And if you want to start eating, that's fine. If your partner leaves the room for the bathroom, like I'm about to, role play out loud. I'll give 20 bucks to the first person who gets it down pat, okay? Ready, go. <laughs> 